Hello and welcome to the Policy Track and Field Complex here at St. John Fisher University in Rochester, New York. It's the 2023 Division Three Outdoor Track and Field National Championship meet. Here we are on day three of three. It's Championship Saturday. Everything on the track and in the field today are straight finals. A lot of action on tap for you at home. While we were away, Victoria Kadiri sets another D3 championship record and an all-time D3 record in the triple jump, jumping 1321 meters from Johns Hopkins. She already won the long jump. She won the triple jump. If you remember from indoors, she set the triple jump record as well. Does it again here at outdoors. Yeah, there's been some action in the field. We'll be sure to bring you guys updates on that as we progress through our broadcast here. Give you an update on team standings. Our first event getting warmed up on the track now is the men's steeplechase, and we'll go there in a few minutes. But, Stu, give me an idea of what, how the team standings are looking right now. Yeah, right now, you know, there's been some 10K scored, some field events scored, and the biggest way to score more points today is how many entries you have left. Wisconsin lacrosse currently has 10 points, but they have nine entries remaining. That's the most out of anyone on the men's side right now. So they'll look to hopefully repeat a big shout out to Evan Hatton of our team from D3 Glory Days pulling this data together for us, making sure we're keeping you all up to speed on all of that. MIT has seven entries left. Whitewater has seven entries left. Rowan, John Carroll, and Oshkosh all have six. Warburg and Loris, Mountain Union and Pomona all have five. So there'll be some stiff competition for that team trophy. If you're just now joining us, this is day three of three, and we've already seen records fall in the first two days. Those records included the men's 4 by 100, 4 by 100 meter relay. That record went down. The men's, the women's, excuse me, 100 meter dash record has gone down. As Stu mentioned at the top of the hour, the women's long jump, excuse me, triple jump record has also gone down. We have, speaking of Division Three records, we do have the Division Three steeplechase record holder, Colin Kirkpatrick from Pomona Pitzer. He'll be on the track today starting things off in the steeplechase, but he has some stiff competition from last year's national champion, Christopher Collette. If you recall, the battle with him and Christian Patska came down to the final barrier, the final 50 meters, and Colette won on a kick against Christian Patska. It was intense. Now throw in a D3 record holder, and this top three battle is it's going to be electric. Yeah, the storylines today are absolutely insane. We've got a packed house here at St. John Fisher University, as I mentioned. Men's 3,000-meter steeplechase is the first event on the track. You see them there on your screen shaking out their legs, doing some final strides. We're about four minutes out from their official start time. Yeah, we can start to run through the field and let you know who's in here, what they've done in the past. As mentioned, Christopher Collette, the returning national champion, was seventh in cross country, was 10th and 11th in the mile and the 3K indoors. Christian Patska, indoor, runner up from last year, indoor 5K champion, held the 5K indoor record briefly until it was broken on the same day, has broken 15 in the, excuse me, has broken 14 in the 5K, both indoors and out. Will Kelly of St. Olaf was 13 in, 13th in cross country, had two sub nine minute races this year and also was the Mayak champion. Adam Lenzer of Wisconsin Lacrosse, who was 19th indoors in the 5K, and now he was 20th last year in this race. So he's looking to improve upon that 20th place performance. Ethan Dimitrovic of John Carroll was fourth last year in this event, had scored big points for John Carroll, and they're going to need him today as well. Caleb Silver, he was 25th in cross country, 14th at the Drake Relays this year. He's looking to have a strong performance for Central College. Made it through on the prelim. So look for him to represent the American Rivers Conference in Central College. Moving along, we have Ezra Ruggles. He was third indoor in the mile. Also had a 1,500 meter qualifier. Wanted to go up in distance and over the barriers. We interested to see how he can handle that new event for him. Mason Shea from Wisconsin Eau Claire, 17th in the indoor mile. PR by 20 seconds to get to this event. Lance Abosky of Wartburg improved 
throughout this year, his first national meet. We saw him go to the lead in his prelim. Jared Bryant of Rowan, excuse me, Jared Bryant of Rhodes, who was 10th last year. This is his fourth steeple this month. Got in on a last chance meet. This is his third national meet. Jake Krause of Wisconsin Oshkosh got in on a last chance qualifier as well. And Colin Kirkpatrick rounds out the field. You're, he was seventh last year, your D3 record holder. Look for this pace to go out hot. Conditions here are really good for distance running. It's about 70 and sunny, low winds. Shouldn't be anything holding these athletes back. We've been treated to a beautiful weekend here so far in Rochester, New York, as the men take to the waterfall start. It's the orange singlets to look out for. Anybody could win it, but your D3 record holder, Colin Kirkpatrick from Pomona Pitzer, and your returning champion from Wartburg, Christopher Collett, also in orange. And we're underway here, day three, championship Saturday. And as mentioned, it looks to be a pretty quick start here from the gun. All three heavy hitters going out there. You see Colette kind of going to the lead with Ezra Ruggles and Pasca taking the wide turn there on the first one. The first barrier will come after the finish line area. And interesting to note, Colin Kirkpatrick sitting there right in the middle of the pack, not ready to go to the front just yet. These men ran their preliminary rounds on Thursday and there really were no easy tickets. No, I mean, it took 9.03 to get here took sub nine to get into this final nine guys pr to get into this final so they're running on some tired legs some new prs as ezra ruggles of suny geneseo takes the early lead here in the first 300 meters or so yeah one day of rest i doubt these men have totally forgotten the prelim at this point ezra ruggles continues to charge down the back stretch but in his pocket is your returning defending national champion from Wartburg, Christopher Collette. Yeah, we talked during prelims how the steeplechase is kind of this mix of strength and speed. You need to be strong to handle the barriers, but also f have some speed to handle the 3K distance. Ezra Ruggles kind of fits the bill for that. Third indoors, as we mentioned, but he was also a cross-country All-American, finishing 33rd. So he kind of has that nice little balance here, and he's not afraid to mix it up with these guys as he was part of that DMR Senior Geneseo National Championship team. Behind Ezra Ruggles, are your leader. It's shaping up to be a rematch between Patska and Colette, who took each other to the line last year for the national championship. They are currently running in second and third. And as you were saying that, Colin Kirkpatrick moves up into fourth. He didn't want to get them too far away as the pace seemingly is increasing each 100 meters. That was a 71-second full lap there, 71 seconds. So moving along about a 445-mile pace. Ezra Ruggles looks great. His form over the hurdles is efficient. He gets low. He doesn't stumble at all. And just looks content to be leading right now. Yeah, the field all still in it. The steeplechase is one of those events where a lot, oftentimes in distance racing, you don't want to be leading early on given the wind, given the conditions, and you know doing the work yourself is a little difficult. But in the steeplechase, it's kind of different. You don't want really, you want your space. You don't want people in front of you. If they go down, you have a clear view of the barrier and you can get over it with how you like to get over the barrier. Yeah, you'll see athletes stringing out a little bit, and that's not necessarily a sign that they're tired. Sometimes they just want a clear line at the jump. Dimitrovich of John Carroll moves into fourth now. We saw him with a surprise fourth place finish last year for the Blue Streaks. And Adam Lenzer of Wisconsin Lacrosse moving into fifth. They're going to need some big points from him today. Up front, Pasca moves into second, and Mace shot into the lead there. He was sitting back in third, but now appears content to move up to Ezra Ruggles' shoulder. That last lap also is 71. So they'll have five lap, four laps to go when they come back. So it's starting to heat up here. This might be a, a big decision for some of these athletes. Do you go with this move? Do you hang back and try to pick off people that go a little too quick, too early? We're side by side in the lead. As we come around to the turn to the water jump, always some jostling for positioning here over the water. We like to see Pasca up there right now. This is kind of what he did in the late stages of that 5K during indoors. He made a decisive move with about a K to go, put himself in position. He's right on the shoulder of Ezra right now. He probably knows Christopher Kletz just on the back of his shoulder. So we'll see how these things play out here in the last four laps. 1,600 meters, and everyone's still kind of in it. 
Patska not just a steeplechaser. We saw him win, to, win a historically deep indoor 5K final. We know how he can kick, and so to see him looking at the front is dangerous for the rest of this field. I was talking with a couple of athletes prior to this, and if it comes down to a kick, they're most concerned with Christopher Collette. It, they said watching his kick in person is deadly. Pasca has wheels. He's ran 345. Colin Kirkpatrick has run 346 plus 151 in the 800. But they're always nervous about where Christopher Collette is. Kirkpatrick there in the blue shorts, the Division Three record holder, is kind of still lurking in the middle of the pack. We have a fall there. Was that Christopher Collette? It who was just went Collette, down yep, in orange. As Pasca now moves, he probably heard that fall. And this is a decisive move here. In the late stages of this race, they'll have three laps to go. So that was 1,400 meters to go. And Pascal's moving. Wow. Looks like Ezra Ruggles has responded a little bit, but the pack is still intact. Big move during the fall. We'll see how much that took out of Colette. What a savvy move from Christian Pasca as Christopher Colette has now moved back in the third. He got up pretty quickly. But wow, 1,200 meters to go. Christian Pasco took advantage of that, and Ezra Ruggles still in second place. If Collette can keep this gap relatively close, he's going to have to make up a little bit of ground, but he can kick really well. He can make up some time on the last lap. Ezra, Ezra Ruggles in second still has a five or six meter gap to the rest of the field. Patska looks back. Wow, I, that's an incredible move. I love it. Patska has opened up such a big gap over the span of less than 400 meters at this point. He did this in the 5K. He made a big move and was able to hang on. He looked around a lot to make sure he has space. But now he's going to focus on each barrier at a time. Take it one by one and don't get too excited that you're in the lead. He's put seven or eight seconds on the field over the course of one lap. And so that's definitely going to take something out of his legs. But as he turns the corner here, he's going to see two to go. You got Ezra Ruggles in second, Christopher Collette in third, Colin Kirkpatrick in fourth, Ethan Dimitrovich in fifth. Christian Patska, when he crosses the finish line, he'll have Silver in sixth, and Sabaski in seventh, with Wenzer in eighth, that final All American spot as Patska continues to move. Also, we should be on record watch here as well. Yeah, Patska hits two to go. He covered the last 800 in about 216. He is moving. Ezra Ruggles continues to hang on to second, but it's definitely not locked up. Christopher Collette and Kirkpatrick are both in his back pocket. Collette now moving into second. Can he get enough ground back over this lap for a hard close? So the three, two, three, and four have kind of separated themselves from the final All-American positions. It's in their best interest to kind of work together here over the last 600 meters to try and catch Patska, but it's going to be hard to take down Patska. He's a 1347 5K, a 345 1500 meter, and this is an event that stuck with him for an entire year. He played over in his head how he gave up the final lead in the final 50 meters last year. He did a hard three mile tempo after it in the hotel parking lot that night, and this is now his race. With one left to go, he'll need a 60. Seven second last lap to break the D3 record. He just came through that previous lap in the 69. He's got quite a gap here. It's Christopher Collette in pursuit. He's about 55 meters down at this point. The gap looks insurmountable. Pasco running well. He took the final look back. I think he thinks he has us locked up now. This is too insurmountable to give up now. Christian Pasco running away from the field. What can Christopher Collette do in the final 300 meters? The steeplechase is tricky, though, getting over the barriers on tired legs. Nothing is guaranteed here as Pasca enters the water jump. Christopher Collette now giving chase in second. For Patrick, your D3 record holder, in third. But watch Lance Sebastian in fourth right now for Warburg. Pasca is clean over the last water jump. Christian Pasca from heartbreak last year to run up in cross country to a 5K indoor national champion. The race that stuck with him all year. The race that made him train completely different over the summer. Christian Pasca, your 2023 D3 steeplechase national champion and just misses the D3 record. As Chris Collette storms down for second. Warper going 2-3. Wow, 2-3 for Warper. Great moment there with Warper going 2-3. Collette and Sebasti from Warper 
going 2-3, a surprise third there from Sebasti, but Christian Patska with that savvy move. You see those athletes congratulating each other on the screen now, but a slight stumble for Colette on the backstretch. Patska takes advantage and presses it all the way to the finish. That move, I can't get over that move. That is the saddest, most intelligent move I've seen so far in this championship. And to all the runners out there, when you see your competitor go down or make a stumble or notice that something is wrong with them, you got to take advantage. And Christian Paska did just that. A brilliant move to earn himself his first steeplechase national championship after coming in second last year. Christopher Collette actually closed a little bit faster his last lap with his 66, but it was really that 216-800 over laps five and lap six for Pasca that created that gap, and it was just too big. Nobody could eat into it. Wow, so now he has to come back later for the 5K. Same with Christopher Collette. Man. We'll run you through the All-American positions here. Actually, we're going to go quickly back to a replay. Here's a little stumble in that orange jersey, middle of your screen. The defending champion, Christopher Collette, stumbles over that barrier, catches a foot. He's up quickly, but by the time he's back on his feet, Christian Patska is off the front. He'd, he'd open up a three-second gap over that next 200 meters. And we never see him again. There he is taking the lead for the first time there. Just an absolutely brilliant run from Christian Patska from Whitewater. We'll run you through the All-American positions. It's Patska, your champion from Whitewater. Colette from Wartburg. Lance Sebaski, his teammate from Wartburg. Con Kirkpatrick, after setting that D3 record earlier in the season, comes back to finish fourth from Pomona Pitzer. Ezra Ruggles, your early leader, finishes fifth from SUNY Geneseo. Ethan Dimitrovich, who also did some work up front from John Carroll, finishes sixth. Adam Lesnar from Wisconsin Lacrosse is seventh. And Caleb Silver, your eighth place finisher, final All American from Central College, finishing 855.66. Pasca there with Coach Miller. He's now the number two all time in the steeplechase. An incredible effort. Yeah, that, just absolutely moving. It'll, it'll be really interesting to see how he comes back in the 5K later today. The 5K is going to be one of our last events on the track, so he's got a little bit of time to kick those legs up. But congratulations to Christian Patska avenging that second place. We interviewed him on the D3 Glory Days podcast earlier this year, and as Stu mentioned during the race, he was couldn't sleep that night after finishing second. He headed out to the hotel parking lot and just started running laps as fast as he could. And so to see, he won't have to do that tonight, Stu. No, he will probably be content. He'll have the 5K later, but he mentioned that this was his main goal coming into this championship, was that steeplechase. There we have it. That's our first track final. And what an exciting one it was, setting the tone for the rest of the day. Next event on the track is going to be the women's 3,000 steeple final. Yeah, let's go through that field right now. We have a, def a champion from 2021, Aubrey Fisher of Warburg, Rachel Hirschkind of SUNY Geneseo, Carolyn McMartin of Central College, Sarah Stevenson of Johns Hopkins. Should mention Hirschkind was fourth last year. Caroline McMartin was 13th, so she was the first one not to be into the final. She is here today. Stevenson was ninth last year, ninth in cross country and 14th in the indoor 3K. Megan Johnson of Central College dropped a minute off of her personal best to be in her first national meet and, and her first national final. Cindy Kolshaw of uh, Wittenberg, this is her national debut as well, has dropped some time this year to earn her spot at the national meet. Ella Winnie of Wellesley debuted at 11.25, dropped that down to 10.42, and she's in her first national meet final as well. Haley Coolcan of St. Lawrence getting faster every single race was your Liberty League champion in her first national meet as well. Emma Maluli of Wisconsin Lacrosse was eighth last year. She has her teammate next to her, Maddie 
Manicel of Wisconsin lacrosse. This is her national track, national meet debut as well. Ellie Meyer of Wartburg, sixth last year, 22nd in cross country. And your run out the field is Mary Kate McGranahan of Amherst. She was a cross country All American, finishing 25th. This is her debut in the track nationals as well. Rocking that white singlet from Amherst. We saw Warper go 2 3. I'm sure the Warper women gained some confidence from seeing their teammates do that. Yeah, seeing Christopher Clubb's reaction when he turned around and saw his teammate was really cool. And he obviously, you know, wanted to win that race, but I'm sure that 2 3 memory will stick with him for a long time. The favorites here, Aubrey Fisher, Aubrey Fisher and Rachel Hirschkind, looked really smooth in the prelims, doing some work up front and just kind of cruising along to lock up their auto automatic qualification spots. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, the two favorites, Hirschkind and Aubrey Fisher, but a lot of these women had a PR to get into this final. The grand hand dropped over 10 seconds. Yeah, get one, here. one thing looking at just the, the field of women assembled here is a lot of them were chopping off big chunks of time every time they ran the steeple this season. So there's a, a lot of momentum coming into these national championships. And they're off. Look for Hirschkind, Aubrey Fisher to go to the front. Right on cue, there they are. Looks like Aubrey Fisher is going to be content to take this one out but tucked in right behind her. It's eerily similar to the men's race. You had Colette and Ezra Ruggles up front early on from Swedish NSU and Warburg, and now we have their counterparts from Swedish NSU doing the exact same thing. We run the first bit here without barriers, but they're approaching the first one now. Last year, Aubrey Fisher went up against Evie Miller from trying Evie Miller set the championship record of 10.07. She was just in the NAIA National Championships today, finished runner up in the steeple chase while pursuing her master's degree. She was 2021 champion. I'm sure she wants to get back on top of that podium. Aubrey Fisher took an early lead, but isn't really pressing the advantage. We see the field totally strung out here. Nobody really out of contention. Early days. Yeah, the early 400 meters in. Rachel Hirschkind's having a great season. pr in the 5K. Show some strength there Rainbow as well from that Sioux and Sioux team. She also PR'd in her 1500 meters as well this year at 445. If it comes down to a kick though, Aubrey Fisher was at that anchor leg in Rainbow last year's Rainbow indoor DMR Warburg National Champion team. She went under 450 for the mile, but Hirschkind doesn't seem afraid to go up against the 2021 champ. And Sarah Stevenson sitting in third right now from Johns Hopkins, ninth in cross country, was ninth last year as well. The favorites side by side with maybe a two or three meter gap to third. They're definitely not clear of the field, but they're making it known who's gonna do the driving here. As we finish our first full lap, we'll get you a split on that. Yeah, Stevenson probably is running with a little bit of uh, Revenge here as she was ninth, the first one out of not being an All American, putting herself in great contention right now. And there is Mc Mary Kate McGranahan in fourth right now. She came in seated 22nd. She ran amazing in the prelim. Yeah, she went for it. You know, she put herself out there, ran almost an 18 second personal best to get to this final. And now in her final track race, she's putting herself in contention to be an All American. And and for the lead, essentially. We split an 81 on that last full lap. We'll keep you updated on pace here for the stat nerds at home. Yeah, a group of five right now. Hirschkind, really efficient over that water jump. She gains a lot of momentum and gets a little bit of separation there. That's the thing, if, you, if you're not the most efficient over these barriers, you gotta do a little bit of extra work than maybe some others in the race. But if you can handle that, like Mary, Mary Kate McGranahan is doing, you're in okay position. McGranahan looking really good there in third. She's riding a lot of momentum. Had an amazing preliminary race. And 
against Carolyn McMart of Central College. Saw Caleb Silver be an All-American as well in the men's race. She's sitting in fifth right now. She was part of that DMR team that was fifth. She was 13th in the, in the 3K during indoors. And as we mentioned earlier, she's the All-American in cross country, was 13th last year, so didn't make it to this final, and now is in All-American position through a handful of laps. Group of five starting to pull away from the field just a little bit. That's Caroline McMartin from Central College. At the, at the back of that group as they create three or four meters of separation, but the two favorites are still running side by side, getting clean looks at the barriers. McGranahan still in third, lurking. She's definitely a threat. And Stevenson's in an interesting position right now. She's kind of leading this chase pack of the back end of the All-Americans in six, seven, eight. She's got to try to bridge that gap to be a part of that five, because I'm assuming a bigger move is going to be made here as the top two have a little bit more efficient over that water jump that gets them some separation from the final, from the back three. They get a little separation, but it comes back together pretty quick. Granahan is pretty quick to close that little gap. Yeah, MK McGranahan doing well here in third. Polsha in fourth. McMartin in fifth. Three runners who weren't even in this final a year ago are now in the top five. Yeah, potential to see a bit of a changing of the guard here. And as they're running their race, coming across our eyes on the infield as the six All-Americans in the Seal Chase doing their cool down together. A lot of camaraderie here at the D3 National Championships. Even though they're competing on the track against each other, there's a lot of mutual respect as Aubrey Fisher and Hirschkind continue to go 1-2 right now. That leading quintet continues to press their advantage just a bit. What was three or four meters is now six to eight meters probably. They've got enough separation to start feeling a little bit comfortable and that putting a little pressure on that chase pack to close down the gap. Fisher and Hirschkind still content to run shoulder to shoulder over the barriers. Kolsha is moving herself up into third now. MK McGranahan kind of falling off that top four, but she can potentially get back there with the surge that she's been doing after the water jumps. Fisher does have a better line here. That's probably worth mentioning. She's on the inside, forcing Hirschkind to run a few extra meters, and that could be the difference in a race like this where the athletes are so talented. McGranahan starting to drift back to the chase pack now. So we do have the four up here, but the final four for all American positions is going to be a battle as Emma Maluli has moved now into that eighth position. They see three laps to go as they cross. And that's Megan seven. Johnson of Central College moving into all American position as well. She's right on Mary Kate McGranahan's shoulder there. That was an 82, 84 high last lap for the leaders. Excuse me, 85 just populated. So Fisher, Hirschkind, Kolsha, and McMartin now your top four. Look for Aubrey to make a move here to kind of separate herself. She does have the best mile speed of this field. This is the first time we've seen Hirschkind drift back a little bit. Now Fisher running alone in the lead for the first time in this race. And Maluli into fifth right now. Come around this water jump here. They'll have three laps remaining once they come down to the home stretch as Aubrey Fisher gets up and over. Oh, there's a fall. Hirschkind went down. Let's see how she can recover. Hirschkind looked to be fading a little bit on this lap and then stumbles over the jump. She's got a lot to come back from here, but Aubrey Fisher now asserts herself in the lead over Kosla, who is about two meters back, but still definitely within striking distance. Mick Martin looking strong. Yeah, I'm impressed with Pulsa right now. Wasn't here a year ago battling a champion. Two laps to go, excuse me, I'm ahead of myself. Two laps to go, 800 meters. Pace has remained pretty static here, but it's starting. we're starting to see the consequences of those 84 and 85 second laps. Aubrey Fisher still in the lead, but Kosla is giving her nothing and, continue, and is actually eating into that lead a little bit. She may pull up into her pocket here any second. Coming into this, she was the 14th seed, and now she's in a position to be top three. A 14th seed. Aubrey Fisher is super efficient. They're both super efficient over these barriers. Carolyn McMartin still in it. 
from Central College. First kind has drifted back into that fourth spot, and she's under a little bit of pressure from behind, but has a pretty clear gap. We're both over the water jump clean. Aubrey Fisher with a two-meter gap back to Kosla. It's not much, but it's something as they enter the home stretch for the penultimate time. Aubrey Fisher, the 2021 national champion, is going head to head with a newcomer. What can Sydney Colsa do in this final 400 meters? Does Aubrey Fisher have enough? They both look pretty content on their faces. A new position, one lap to go. The bell lap, 901. Aubrey Fisher hears the bell and appears to open up her stride a little bit, but it's matched immediately by Sydney Kosla from Wittenberg, who is eating into the gap. She's looking to come up on the shoulder. We have that forward lean by Aubrey Fisher. A slight slowdown for Aubrey Fisher there to lose momentum, but Kosla is going on the outside of Aubrey Fisher. The 2021 national champion has competition. They'll have two bears and a water jump to go. Oh man, 200 meters, it's close. They're trading the lead back and forth over the barriers. All eyes are on this water jump. We'll see the position they have for the final sprint. It's Colsa, it's Aubrey Fisher. Can Aubrey Fisher hang on to the lead? Oh, Fisher. She was quick out of the water jump down the final 100 meters. One barrier to go, it's gonna come down to a kick. It's Colsa of Wittenberg, it's Fisher of Wartburg. Last barrier. A final kick, they're pushing. Aubrey Fisher, Sydney Colsa, Warburg, 50 meters, 20 meters. Aubrey Fisher, your 2023 steeplechase champion, 10-15, wow. What a challenge there from Kosla. She really looked like in the last 80 or so she was gaining momentum, but Aubrey Fisher was able to respond to it. And Ellie Meyer of Warburg comes in fourth with a big kick. So Warper goes 1-4 after going 2-3 in the men's steeplechase. Wow. Warper 2-3, 1-4. It wasn't necessarily the battle we expected between the two athletes we expected, but Sydney Kosla from Wittenberg showed up and just absolutely went after Aubrey Fisher over that last lap and almost got it. And Aubrey Fisher, your 2021 champion, grabs another championship in 2023. Half the field, more than half the field, wasn't an All-American last year. And now they're, excuse me, four were an All-American last year, four weren't an All-American last year, and now four are. Megan Johnson didn't qualify, Ellie, Ella Winnie didn't qualify, Carolyn Clark didn't qualify, Kolsha, excuse me, weren't All-Americans, now they are this year. Run you quickly through the All-American positions as we've already mentioned some of them. We're gonna take you back to the last water jump. Aubrey Fisher enters it with a slight advantage. They hit the water at about the same time. Fisher presses again, but Kosla was able to respond to every move that happened into this race. And she battles back almost to the shoulder before Fisher goes again. And the 2021 national champion gets another trophy for her trophy case. And she was 10-15 on 10-15-34. So that moves Aubrey Fisher to sixth all time. Kolsha moves to seventh all time. Rachel, wow. Rachel Hurst kind an early challenger. Still lands in fifth solidly in an All-American position there. Two electric races to kick off the championship Saturday. And now we're gonna speed things up a little bit here as we go to the men's four by one field. Kind of an interesting thing happened in the qualification for this race. Yesterday we actually had a runoff to get into this race between Texas Lutheran and Morris. They ran the exact same time down to the thousandth of a second in separate prelims on Thursday. And so we had a runoff yesterday. Texas Lutheran came out ahead in that runoff and you'll now see them in lane one. And even other news of the four by one in the prelims, the very first prelim on the track Wisconsin lacrosse set a new Division Three national record in the 4x100 meter relay. They ran 
39-86 to get here. The second team ever in D3 history to break 40 seconds. And last year's Benedictine won this national championship. So we're going to crown a new 4x1 relay. Lacrosse was second last year. So they'll look to improve upon that. John Carroll was fifth last year. Oshkosh was a had job of time, so they'll look to improve upon that. The rest of the field are new to this final. Yeah, we'll run you through lane assignments now as you see them on your screen. Texas Lutheran in one, John Carroll in two, Ohio Northern in three, your D3 record holders, Wisconsin Lacrosse in four, Wisconsin Oshkosh to their outside in five, Rowan in six, Mount Union in seven, and Emory out in lane eight. So middle of the track, lacrosse going up against Oshkosh, but don't count out Rowan. Rowan will have Jameer Beasley on that second leg. He's in the 200 meter final. He'll be going off to Rutgers next year for his fifth year of eligibility. The fastest lap in track and field. Getting the final preparations here. Really interesting to see what Texas Lutheran has in the legs. Probably a bit of a chip in the, on their shoulder having to run that extra round. Not a great position there in lane one. But hey, they're happy to be here. You get that stick around. You go from a runoff to potentially an All-American team. Yep, eight spots, eight finishers. They'll all be All-Americans, but the order is to be determined. So 39-86, your D3 record. The previous one was held by New Jersey City, 39-95. Also your individual 100 record holder is in this race. From a team standpoint, John Carroll is in trophy contention. Lacrosse is in trophy contention. Oshkosh in trophy contention, and Rowan in trophy contention, based on the entry, based on the entries and where they fell. So they'll need that to give you an idea of the live scoring results here for the team store scores. Eau Claire currently with 31, MIT with 24 and a half, Warburg with 17, Whitewater and Williams tied with 16. But that will fluctuate throughout the the day as a lot of these teams still have plenty of entries still to go and it looks like on the track right now the official with the relay with the relay batons we're getting a special baton delivery here can't run a relay without a baton yeah we'll need those that would be uh, helpful there doesn't seem to be any urgency like there was yesterday All right, now we're getting the batons, the official batons, straight out of the official baton cabinet into the hands of all of these athletes. And once we have that, we will be equipped for like this four by 100 meter final. It's like the pitcher going out without the baseball. Can't play baseball without a ball. Let's make sure he brought eight of them. <laughs> be really unfortunate if we're only at seven. Yeah, here we go. All right. And we have batons in the hands of these athletes. They were checking them to make sure they were official. Yeah, they had to have a certain weight to them. Yeah, certain length. 
fun fact, you, once you finish the race, you got to hand the baton back. You can't keep that baton. No, su no souvenirs. No handouts. All, All right. right, here we go. Can they break the record again? Wisconsin lacrosse in lane four. They'll be the middle of your screen wearing maroon singlets and a grayish top. On the outside of them, Oshkosh and Rowan, both in yellow. So if you see two yellow teams, that's Oshkosh, then Rowan. Here we go. Mount Union on the top there in lane seven. Hands off first, but here comes Sam Blaskowski. Sam Blaskowski doing the work for Wisconsin lacrosse on the longest leg. Hands the baton off first. Lacrosse will have the advantage coming into the anchor leg. Luke Schroeder grabs baton, and here he goes. But here comes Rowan on the outside. Can Evan Corker of Rowan catch him? No, it's the cross, four by one champs. And they go under 40 seconds again in back-to-back -back days. 39-96 over Rowan, 40-14. Wow, a big start to the day for the cross. 10 huge points for the Eagles. What a leg from Blaskowski there, leg two, he got it. Took it down the back stretch and put the cross in a position to win that national title. Folks, before today, only one team has ever broken 40 seconds in the 4x1. Lacrosse has now done it twice in back-to-back -back er, back -back races. The results flash on your screen. Lacrosse, your national champion in the 4x1, followed closely by Rowan, John Carroll, Oshkosh, Mount Union, Texas, Lutheran, Emory, and Ohio Northern. Your last All-American in that men's 4x100 meter relay. And as we mentioned, the team battle, all four of those teams needed points as we go to the Triple Jump Award to recognize the new D3 record holder. In eighth place from St. Norbert, with a distance of 12.08 meters, Sydney Spaith. In seventh place from Wisconsin Lacrosse, with a distance of 12.13 meters, Mia Keller. In sixth place from Center, with a distance of 12.16 meters, Jasmine Clunch. In fifth place from Tufts, with a distance of 12.26 meters, Leah Roddy. In fourth place from Chatham, the distance of 12.37 meters, Ariel Bruner. In third place from Alvernia, with a distance of 12.40 meters, Chanel Felix. In second place from Washington University with a distance of 12.45 meters, Ibun Opata. And in first place from Johns Hopkins University with a distance of 13.21 meters, Victoria Kadiri. Victoria Kadiri back on top of the podium for the second time this outdoor season. As we mentioned, she set the D3 national record, and here it is, her first time breaking the record, 13.05 meters. She becomes the second woman in D3 history. Next event of the track is the women's 4x100 meter relay. Yet. Here she goes the again on her final attempt of the record held by Methodist, she jumps 13, set in 2012, 45.65 seconds. Her ninth event of the facility the record was one, set one of the greatest just the other night Division here in the preliminaries in by Loris, the team of Creasy, Edwards, Lynn, and Kohoff. Crazy weekend. Competing here today in the finals, the lane one champion. will be the All College American of New Jersey. Lane number two will be Elmhurst. Just this calendar year alone. Lane three, two Mount Union. Division three records as well. Uh, lane four and will be Loris. You know she's helping her team to lane five, team Wisconsin Lacrosse. Lane six is Washington University. 
Elaine Seven is Emery. I can't believe she broke another division. Elaine University of Chicago. After doing the half. Becoming one of the greatest jumpers in D3 history. We talked with her prior to the indoor competition and her coach there. Loris is the two-time defending champion in this event. Teams. They also she now of, she has a lot of events that she has to handle own that and facility he, record. He does a great job of keeping sure. Wisconsin Lacrosse sure was third in this event in 2021, and Washington University third in this event in 2022. But Loris trying to win three in a row here. We're at St. John Fisher University for the 2023 Division Three Outdoor Track and Field Championships. Down to the podium area for our awards. Presenting the awards for the 3,000 meter steeplechase is Wisconsin Whitewater Assistant Coach Jeff Miller. In eighth place from Central College with a time of 855.66, Caleb Silver. In seventh place from Wisconsin Lacrosse with a time of 855.02, Adam Lenzer. In sixth place from John Carroll with a time of 854.93, Ethan Dimitrovich. In fifth place from SUNY Geneseo with a time of 853.10, Ezra Ruggles. Place from Pomona Pitzer with a time of 852.87, Colin Kirkpatrick. In third place from Wartburg with a time of 851.29, Lance Sobaski. In second place from Wartburg with a time of 850.61, Christopher Collette. And in first place from Wisconsin Whitewater with a record time of 842.46, Christian Patska. the 2023 Division Three National Outdoor Track and Field Championships. We are here at St. John Fisher University at the Policini Track and Field Complex. You have your steeplechase All-Americans there on the screen. Christian Patska, your champion in a D3 championship record. An incredible race from Christian Patska. He runs 842.46. Our next event on the track as we move away from the award stand, it's going to be our women's 4x100 meter relay. We just saw, our all, saw our, the men from lacrosse take the crown in the men's 4x100 meter relay. And we take to our box for the women's championship now. Yeah, we should be on record watch here. Laura's second all time in this event, only off by 0.07 seconds. So, seven hundredths of a second there. Loris comes in as your top seed, as Stu mentioned, 45.96 there in lane four. They wear purple. And to note, they are the defending national champions as well. Lacrosse, though, also has a chance at the record. They are fourth all time. They ran 45.95 this season. So just off that record as well by three tenths of a second. So look for Loris and Lacrosse, four five, middle of your screen. Lacrosse just saw the men win their national championship, and they're going to need points here. This is the team battle, Loris versus Lacrosse. We get things started with the 4x1. We'll take you through as we're about two minutes away from the gun. In lane one, TCNJ. In lane two, Elmhurst. In lane three, Mount Union. Lane four will be Loris. Five, Wisconsin Lacrosse. Six, Wash U. Emory in seven, and U Chicago rounds out the field in lane eight. Stu mentioned that team battle between Loris and Lacrosse. Still early days here on Championship Saturday, but it'd be nice to get those points in your pocket now. 
Yeah, this is kind of, we mentioned you want a 4x4 four four to end the meet, but you also want a 4x1 to start the meet off as well if you have that depth in your sprinters, and these teams definitely do. We'll see a few of these sprinters later on in the individual events across the 100, 200, and 400. And they have the batons, and they wait for the cue to climb into the blocks. The men had it a little tough there, waiting for the baton. The women will get quickly into their blocks as we're just a minute, less than a minute away from the gun as we get the white flag to the Mr. Starter. Conditions here, great for sprinting. Feeling pretty warm down on the track. Very light winds, so we could definitely see some fast times today. Watch the clock, we're on record watch here. 45-65 is both the D3 record and the championship record. Loris comes in running 45-72. They're away. Loris slowly making up the stagger, but Wash U looks to be moving up as well as they'll hand the baton off. First, looks like Emery might have done it, but here comes Loris. That's Gabby Nolan for Loris. That's Marion Edwards, excuse me. Loris made up one stagger. Let's see if they can make up another one around this turn. We'll get a clear idea coming down the home stretch. Wash U, but here comes Emma Lawrence from Wisconsin Lacrosse to get the baton off. Can Gabby Nolan do it for Lawrence? But here comes Wash U on the outside. Can Wash U do it? That's a great run from Gabby Nolan, your 2019 individual champion in the 100. She's had some disappointment so far in these championships, failing to advance to her individual event finals. But there she is anchoring the Loris squad to a national championship and a division three record. Wow. You talk to Gabby Nolan before this. You know, she has some time off of looking for better efforts right now. Broke the D3 record. Incredible. Wash U 45-67 just missing that D3 record. They'll move to third all time now. So much confidence in the anchor there. We're going to go ahead and show you that last turn, that handoff to Gabby Nolan. She faced a serious threat from her outside in Wash U. She held on there. Wash U, Lauren Gay makes a quick little chance there, but Gabby Nolan holds on. What a, ra titles. what a race there from Lawrence to grab that title, pad their points total for the team competition, and grab a little, little record there as icing on the cake. Third straight 4x1 title for Loris. Dominance in the event from 2021. 2022 and now 2023 as they're fired up. Yeah, such a cool time in track and field when you can celebrate a championship with the team. It's often looked at as an individual event, but these women from Loris ha obviously have a lot of respect for each other and they get, to, they get to share this championship together. For now, we're turning our attention back to the infield where we will celebrate our All-Americans from the women's steeplechase. Ella Winnie. In seventh place from Central College with a time of 1036.98, Megan Johnson. In sixth place from Wisconsin Lacrosse with a time of 1034.69, Emma Maluli. In fifth place from SUNY Geneseo with a time of 1029.88, Rachel Hirschkind. In fourth place from Wartburg with a time of 1028.11, Ellie Meyer. In third place from Central College with a time of 1024.39, Caroline McMartin. 
in second place from Wittenberg with a time of 10.15.81, Sydney Kosla. And in first place from Wartburg with a time of 10.15.34, Aubrey Fisher. Congratulations to those steeplechase All-Americans, Aubrey Fisher, your national champion from Wartburg there. They hold their trophies up. She got that trophy from her coach. Great shot of the crowd here at St. John Fisher University, the Policini Track Complex. We've got a great crowd here. We've got amazing weather. It's our third day of these championships, and it's final after final after final today, Stu. Yeah, that's right. We're going to get back onto the track here. Let's go, Welcome back to the 2023 Division Three. Uh, anywho, we're at the 1500-meter final here right now. Championship record set in 1982, 344.50 from Kevin Foley of Haverford. We've already seen the 1500 meter record go down this year from Ryan Wilson running 340 out in California. This is one of the hardest years to make this 1500 meter meet and even harder to make the final as all were under 350, but it took 347.75 to make it. We have a couple of runners here who ran all time times that will be featured here in this final. Ryan Wilson, the D3 record holder in 340.06. Travis Martin, ninth all time, 344.16. Scott Sikorsky, 21st all time, 345.07. And Sam Laneza, 22nd all time, running 345.18. So it's loaded here. It's the hoo-hoo of the D3 men's 1500 slash milers right now in Division Three. I ran a little bit with uh, Travis Martin the other day around the hotel parking lot. And he said he felt amazing. He had his eyes on Ryan Wilson. He knew that that was going to be the guy to meet, beat. And Ryan Wilson showed us why he's the man to beat in the prelims. Looked very relaxed in the last 100 meters. Had his head on a swivel, looking around for any challengers. We've actually had, we actually have Ryan Wilson's parents seated just below us here. And uh, Ryan Wilson, fun fact for you, Stu, was the Wilson family hot dog mile champion three years in a row. Wow. How many hot dogs are in that mile? They eat uh, three hot dogs over the course of a mile, and Ryan Wilson is a three-time champion, so he's got that event coming up on July 4th. Wow, so this is training for the Wilson family hot dog mile. None better than to run a D3 1500-meter final. But let's introduce you to the other guys in the field. Jimmy Moreland will also be here. He was sixth last year. He scratched the 800 and has 149-800 speed. Justin Krause was Wisconsin Whitewater just saw Patska, Christian Patska, win the steeple. He was fourth in the 1500 last year, eighth indoors this year. Stephen Potter was Wisconsin Oshkosh. He was eighth last year and was ninth in the indoor 800 this year, so has some redemption on his hands to continue to be an All-American for Oshkosh. Jack Rosencrans out of Pomona Pitzer, seventh outdoors last year and he also has that sp strength in him here in 1401 for a 5k. Cal Yakin out of Otterbein, 18th in the mile indoors. He was 16th in cross country. He was an 11th seat coming into it so hoping to become an All-American here. Ian Kelly of Luther, he opened up the season running 359 Closed it, running 347, was the 17th seed, and now he's in this final, hoping to be an All-American. He was 76th in cross country. This is his first time running a track national meet. And run out the field from Carnegie Mellon, Colin McLaughlin. He represents the Tartans. He was 107th in cross country, but rebounded indoors to make the meet and is hoping to continue in his success this season. 
Stephen Potter was another athlete who impressed me in his prelim, the athlete from Wisconsin Oshkosh. He made a hard charge late to secure his qualification position, made it through with a 348.2. And so Joji, he can close well. We'll see what he has in the course of this race. With a favorite like Ryan Wilson, it's kind of up in the air what he wants to do. If he wants to hang in the pack in his prelim, he kind of hung back at first and then asserted himself at the front. And so we'll see if he wants to leave this race from the front or if he's going to let someone else take over. It could be a slow tactical race today. Yeah, I mean, he does have the 800 left this today. MIT is vying for a team title. So I wonder what Coach Riley Macon told him to do here. Is he going to relax? Is he going to go from the gun, make people hurt? They need points, but he wants individual glory as well. But I think, I think he's thinking about a team title as they just missed it indoors by just half a point. Yeah, these championship 1500s are often tactical affairs, but nothing we've seen at these championships so far has been tactical. And they're off. Based on leg speed, everyone's trying to get position. It looks like Travis Martin in the middle of the track and Sikorsky on the inside with Jamie Moreland of Haverford. But Travis Martin out to the early lead in the first 100 meters or so. Travis Martin's going to take a crack at breaking four minutes in the mile later this summer, and he's showing you some of that speed now. It looks like he wants to make it an honest race. And the indoor mile champ, the outdoor 1,500-meter record holder, sitting in the back. He might have checked his watch here. Check the watch. He's cruising along in last place, essentially. That shows you the confidence that he has in his ability to move up through this field. And they're going out on a quick, honest pace here. 44 seconds through 300. So if you do that for 1,600 meters, that is sub four. Yeah, we'll see if they can keep this pace rolling. But the field is definitely strung out. Travis Martin, your early leader, looks content to string it out. We'll see if he gets any help. But I, I don't think anyone's going to help him out. Yeah, I mean, Martin, Moreland, Sikorsky, and Yak in your top four right now. They're done for the day after this. You know, you got to put the hurt on Ryan Wilson. It kind of shows that they're not afraid of who's in this field taking it out hard. You don't want to leave it to a kick given that Ryan Wilson can run 146 in the 800. Yeah, the thing about 1,500-meter fields is they all believe they have the best kick, but Ryan Wilson has showed time and time again that he can do it from the front or from the back. Yeah, Steven Potter in the mix there. Justin Krause, fifth and sixth right now. Come on, Ace! Looks like Ian Kelly and Matthew Leckie moving up, but here comes Ryan Wilson. As we're talking about the tactics here, they look like it slowed down a touch there. Yeah, 65 seconds there for that lap as Ryan Wilson now moves into second. 64-5 that lap, so they slowed things down. Yeah, slowed down pretty dramatically, and that just allowed Ryan Wilson to kind of naturally keep the pace up and float to the front. He slots in in second. Travis Martin, your early leader, continues to press from the front, but Wilson, now if he turns around, that's who he's going to see. Yeah, that, and here comes Matthew like in the outside, making a move. Here we go. 600 meters to go, and we're starting to see things wind up here. Travis Martin responding well to every single move. It's been a yo-yo in its affair as Moreland on the inside. But Travis Martin with 500 to go is followed by Matthew Leckie and Ryan Wilson. But here comes Wilson. I'm still looking at Potter there. I think he can close hard if he maintains, maintains his position. Ryan Wilson checks his inside. He's still not ready to go around. And they hit the bell lap in the men's 1500 meter final. Ryan Wilson looking around kind of like, where is everyone? He's kind of gauging what he should do. But Travis Martin, your indoor 1K national record holder, is putting it to Ryan Wilson right now, making it, making him work for this as they come up to 1,200 meters. This has been a yo-yo pace. We had a 65-second lap. Then we had a 60-second lap. Travis Martin goes again. But here comes Ryan Wilson up on the shoulder and around. He's making his move with 250 to go. This is his bid for the championship. Ryan Wilson took a look back to see where the field was and decided it's time to move. He is working down 150 meters ago. Here comes Jamie Moreland around the outside, but with 100 meters ago, Ryan Wilson, your 1,500 meter outdoor record holder, is looking around. He looks content. He's gauging his Moreland effort. is coming up. But here comes Jamie Moreland. But Ryan Wilson knows exactly where he is. Your 1,500 meter outdoor record holder is now your 1,500 meter national champion. Leckie closed really well there for third as well. We've got Ryan Wilson's family just ahead of us. They're high-fiving all around. 
and they are celebrating with even other teams there. Ryan Wilson adds to his career. He won the 800 last year, won the mile this year. A great race between him and Travis Martin. Sam Laneza moves up to fourth. Lucky third. Jamie Moreland, your runner-up. 55-second close there for Ryan Wilson, and that was just a masterful race going out in dead last through the first lap. As soon as the pace slowed, he used that opportunity to float to the front, sit in the pocket of Travis Martin. Travis Martin would eventually finish fifth, but when Ryan Wilson went with 2.50 to go, actually, let's see that pass now. Here comes Ryan Wilson. He looks on the inside for something, but then goes around Travis Martin, who had led this entire race and never looked back at 200 to go he had this thing wrapped up Moreland from Haverford closing well but just didn't have what it took to eat into Ryan Wilson's lead and nobody makes it look easier than Ryan Wilson effortless there as you see our D3 glory days photographers getting the shot of the champion Ryan Wilson super impressive how he was able to control his effort there and not work too hard as he's got another race left to go you know we talked about being able to kick at all levels, the 1500 meter always comes down to that last 400. Historically, to be an All-American, Ian Kelly was eighth. He had to run 56.6 in your last 400. So if you're a high school miler out there and you're thinking you have wheels, you got to run 56 in the last quarter to be a D3 All-American. And even guys not in the All-American position all broke 60 seconds. Yeah, really just an interesting tactical race there with the way the pace lagged in the middle and then picked it back up. Just congratulations to Ryan Wilson, your champion from MIT. We'll see him again very soon today. It was super impressive how in control he was of it. Like, he knew exactly where everyone was. He knew the effort he needed to use in this race, knowing that he has the 800 later and that's big 10 points for MIT and that's why he's the favorite it's it's really reading his body language in the prelims the way he's kind of relaxed and looking around even in that race he didn't look like he was ever really straining I mean you know he's working hard but he kind of stays within himself and doesn't doesn't betray betray his emotions on his face too much yeah he's a very aware and savvy racer I bet you we don't see him go on to that podium he's got an 800 and roughly an hour and 20 minutes, and he's got to go up against Mike Jasa and the rest of that field. What do you do for an hour and 20 minutes? You cool down, you warm up, you put the feet up for a minute? Yeah, I think you see him right there doing some barefoot jogging to recover here. You go back into the shade, get some fluids, get a granola bar, and you kind of just wait until that 800. Yeah, great race there from the men. The women are up next on the track. Yeah, it's going to be another fun race as we will able to see the indoor indoor national champion from the mile, Annika Urban. The record here held by Emily Pomainville from 2013, 413 69. Not only is that the D3 national record, but she did that in the prelims. It was one of those historic races where she went for it broke the record so that way she could chill the final the next day, run the 1500, run the 800, and not have to worry about a record attempt. We'll run you through the names in the field and then give you some points to look out for as they walk up to the line behind the official there. The field of 12, Emily Conkis from Wash U, Jillian Roeder of MIT, Annika Urban from Emory, Kat Wimmer, University of Chicago, Brittany McCauley from Mount Union, Windsor Ardner, Suni Geneseo, Chrissy Amon from Bates, Vivian Kane from NYU, Evelyn Battleson Gunkel from University of Chicago, Amelia Lehman from Wisconsin Oshkosh, Aoife Dunn from Wash U, and Maddie Kelly also from the University of Chicago. A few to keep an eye on here. Evelyn Battleson Gunkel, she fell in the indoor mile and did not was not able to complete the race, so look for her to try to rebound from that. She's also coming in as the 19th seed, made it to the final of the top 12. She'll want to be an All-American. She has two other teammates in here with Kat Wimmer. She was 12th in the indoor mile, and Maddie Kelly was 12th last year, but she was the runner-up indoors on, in the 3K and was part of that anchor leg that brought them a runner-up performance in that DMR as well. Some other notable names are just notable performances. Vivian Kane ran an eight-second personal best on May 14th to qualify. So the last week, the last chance qualifier, she did that and then a few days later did the 5K as well. So two qualifiers in the very last week, she comes in as a 17th seed, but 
looking to improve upon that. Aoife Dunn out of Wash U, your indoor runner-up in the 800. She'll be back later for the 800, the only woman to be doing the 15-8 double. We mentioned Annika Urban, the indoor mile champ. She's also seventh all time as well. So we'll see. 4.19.43 is her seat time. She's got to drop six seconds. But the way she's been dropping time all season, don't count it out just yet. As she'll have some stiff competition. Emily Conkis was fifth in the 3K indoors, also part of that DMR championship team. Jillian Roder was fifth indoors in the mile. Amelia Lehman was seventh indoors in the mile. Brittany McCauley had a three-second personal best to qualify when was 10th in 2021. Chrissy Amon was second at the New England meet, her first national meet. And Windsor Ardner, Windsor Ardner of Tunisia, Genesee was eighth in cross country, but 10th in the indoor 800. So she'll look to become an All-American as well. She was also an All-American, I believe, in the 3K in 2022 as well. We ran these prelims on Thursday. And it, it took it was pretty quick. The the final time qualifier was four thirty point eight nine, so almost a sub four thirty to make it into the final of this event, but pretty well within the range of the majority of this field. We saw two athletes set personal bests in the prelim, but everybody else is able to make it through with maybe something in the tank. So we'll see what happens in this final. Could go either way. We saw a little bit of gamesmanship there in the men's fifteen hundred. I expect we'll see something similar here, but we could also see Annika Urban just take it from the front. A slight correction there for the Loris 4x1. They've actually won four in a row back in 2019 as well as the 1,500 meters go off. And it looks like a Chicago runner out into the early lead as Maddie Kelly and Evison, Evelyn Battleson Gunkel goes to their lead as well. And Vivian Kane there in second. Interesting tactics here. Two pairs of sunglasses here in the in the early stages as Bettis and Gunkel maybe remembers what happened in the indoor mile, wants to get away from traffic, and is really pushing this field. Yeah, she's got about a meter of a gap, and the field's responding pretty quickly here. I'm not sure if she's slowing it down or if the field is catching up because they don't want to give her that advantage. Yeah, that next five from her is Kunkus from... Wash U, Aoife Dunn from Wash U, Manny Kelly, Chicago, Vivian Kane of NYU, and Annika Urban of Emory. Yeah, the field pretty much all together here. Conkis there in second. Annika Urban moving up onto her shoulder. She kind of ran her whole prelim in lane two as well, so she seems pretty comfortable just to tuck in there. Battleson Gunkel still has about a meter lead here, but she's definitely not running away from the, this field. We have, we have some congestion there in the middle of the pack. And it's not like we're going through slow. They went through in 69 seconds, maybe 70 low there. So for the first 400. So they are pushing this pace a little bit. That's 440 for a mile. So they're going for it right now. Gunkel continues to lead this field, but we are two, sometimes even three across behind her. So some athletes just licking their chops, waiting for the right moment to go. I like where Maddie Kelly is of U Chicago on the outside there. She's in good position. She can watch how people make their moves, when to react, and is in good position to get out. She's not boxed in. We saw a great kick from her in that indoor 3K as well as the DMR. So watch for Maddie Kelly on the outside there to go with Annika Urban whenever she makes that move. Yeah, it's kind of that fine balance of wanting the freedom to move by being on the outside and wanting to run the shortest line on the inside. But at this pace, it seems like they can kind of go either way as we see on our screen now. Annika Urban moving up onto the shoulder, still not tucking into lane one. We'll see if she goes around Gunkel here or just waits in the wings. Yeah, we mentioned tactics come into play here. No tactics. They are keeping things honest here. 440 mile pace, so roughly that mid to low 420s, which all but Annika Urban would be a PR for. You know, the fastest, the next fastest time is 425. If we're in that 423 pace, you know, it's roughly at all PR for this field. That pace will start to sink in a little bit on this lap as they turn the corner. They'll see one to go. They enter the straight for the penultimate time. When will Urban go? She's running in lane two on the shoulder of Gunkelson. Gunkel, excuse me, Balson Gunkel. Annika Urban now to the slight lead with Maddie Kelly going with her. The two U Chicago women. It's a battle of the UAA right now. Their conference is loaded as they have five women in the top five right now. 
at the bell. Annika Urban moves into the lead. Slate's in there at the inside of lane one. But Aoife Dunn from Wash U, we remember her being the indoor runner-up, but Annika Urban taking control right now. Annika Urban continues to move, but here comes Maddie Kelly getting up on her shoulder. The two Wash U women battling here. Look for Vivian Kane on the outside as well. Vashi, a little bump there. We'll see. Still anybody's race. We've got seven athletes in contention as they turn the corner to see 100 meters to go. Annika Urban maybe opens up about a meter of a gap. Annika Urban set the stage early in this race. Kind of let it, but here comes Maddie Kelly of U Chicago. Can she challenge the indoor champ? 50 meters to go. It's Annika Urban. Annika Urban is going to hold on from the indoor mile champ to the outdoor 1500 meter champ and a blanket finish for the final All-American positions. Wow. Annika Urban fielding a challenge there from Maddie Kelly, but responding again, had another gear for that last 50. She played her hand expertly. She, she did exactly what she wanted to do, and we saw that gear change over the last 150. Oh, excuse me, that was Jillian Roeder of MIT in the dark single. It looked like an NYU singlet. ...up the race as she was sitting in seventh through the first two laps. So everybody in those All-American positions setting personal best with the accession of your champion, Annika Urban. And we turn our attention now to the infield where the four by 100 meter relay champions are being crowned. In sixth place, the College of New Jersey. In fifth place, Emory University. In fourth place, the University of Chicago. In third place, Wisconsin Lacrosse. In second place, Washington University. And in first place, with a winning time of 45.60 seconds, Loris. Congratulations to your All-Americans in the 4x100 meter relay. We'll step back here for a couple minutes, and when we come back, we'll have the 110 hurdles final for the men. Thanks for joining us at the 2023 Division III Outdoor Track and Field National Championships. We're back at the Policini Track and Field Complex here in Rochester, New York. It's the 2023 Division III Outdoor Track and Field Championships hosted by St. John Fisher University. The action is thick and hot here down on the track, and we are underway in the championship Saturday. Before we get into the men's 110-meter hurdle championship, let's give you a quick update on our team standings. Yeah, right now, MIT after Ryan Wilson 
won that 1500. He'll move into they'll move into the lead with 34 and a half points. Behind them, Wisconsin Eau Claire with 31, but I do not believe they have any entries left. Lacrosse with 22, Rowan with 20, John Carroll with 19, Wartburg with 17, Williams and Whitewater tied for 16th. Carroll has 15th, and to run out the top 10, Wilmington and Platteville are tied with 14. On the women's side, Laura is currently leading with 32. MIT and WashU tied with 31. Lacrosse has 30 and a half. Wartburg has 26. Hopkins has 21. Chicago, Tufts with 20. Ithaca, Dubuque tied for 10th, 9th with 18 points. Still a lot of points to go, but some of the favorites sitting in pretty good positions right now. Yeah, so now we're on to the track here with the men's 110 hurdles. Your defending champ will be here soon, but it's going to be an ex excellent day here in the championships. The weather is perfect. A meet record, a championship record, a D3 record. Everything has been set so far as we're only just a handful of events through this final championship Saturday. Yeah, just absolutely electric action, seeing records go down all over the place. But there they are on the track now, your competitors in the 110-meter hurdles and the defending champion just having a seat on his blocks there in lane five. Yeah, let's go under the hood here and let you know who is in this meet and what they have done. We have Kenneth Way, the defending national champion. He was sixth indoors. He'll be in the center of your track in lane five. Desmond Gist of Bluffton was 14th last year, 15th indoors, qualified as the last chance meet. He'll be in lane eight in that white singlet. Max Cleveland of Simpson was 11th indoors and qualified at the last chance meet. He'll be from Simpson in lane one. Dayton Love of Wartburg, he was fifth last year. Excuse me, he did not finish last year as he hit the hurdle and fell. Was fifth in the hurdles this indoor season, looks to make a comeback here. Jake Gladio, your 2021 400 meter champion, was sixth last year, third indoors. He'll be in lane three for the trying. Waku Nkrumah of Rowan, he's the freshman. He debuted at the 1425, excuse me, this is his national meet debut. He'll be in the middle of your track, sitting down there in lane four. Brett Morris of Cortland State was 11th last year. He's from SUNY Cortland. He'll be in lane seven. And Enoch, Enoch, Enoch Ellis of MIT, the freshman, 20th indoors, looks to add more points for MIT, right next to his teammate with Kenneth Way. Championship record, Division Three record, 13.72. Clock watchers out there, that's the time to look out for. And the, fla uh, the flags, the trees, the breeze, looks pretty calm. Yeah, the, flag, the officials' flags are blowing a little bit, but I see a green flag. Maybe that's a good sign. <laughs> well, that means they're ready to go. That's, that's a slight breeze. We're hoping for some record-eligible times here. After this race, we'll have the women's 100-meter hurdles, and we call that a record watch, so we should be on the lookout for that, too. Once again, your defending champion there in lane five. His teammate, Enoch Ellis, there to his outside in lane six. And the freshman, Kwaku Nkrumah, on his inside in lane four. Stand up, make a few more adjustments here. Dayton Love didn't like the way his blocks were situated. Put the hand up, let the official know he wants to change it, and they will oblige. Green the customary card. green card, let them know everything's fine. Just for good measure, we'll see a green card there. Appreciate that. Big team implications here for Rowan, Warburg, and MIT. MIT with the slight advantage. Remember, they did not qualify their the second seed overall, Walter Truitt, but they pick up some points here from Enoch Ellis. So let's see if they can make up for losing potentially that on paper eight points, but they think they will. And we settle in again.
away clean this time. Hitting the first hurdle, Kenneth Way looks like he's in a good spot. Jake Gladio also out well. Dayton Love there in lane two. But it's a blanket finish to Kruma and Way side by side. No one's pulling ahead quite yet. Maybe to Kruma by a hair as we blanket finish. Eyes on the clock. 14-2-2, the flash. Waiting here to see on the screen. Our angle is tough to tell, and it's easy. 14.22, he gets the national championship in such a closely matched final. What an upset there from Enoch Ellis, 14.22. The 14th seed, from wow. From 14 to one, Enoch Ellis upsets just by making the final, but he wasn't done yet. He decided to pick up a national championship during his time here at St. John Fisher University. That race was close from the gun, Stu. Wow, insane. Over the last two hurdles, it was so hard to tell. And we are still figuring out the rest of the All-Americans, the final two through eight finishes. But Enoch Ellis of MIT, the first year, after finishing 20th indoors, AKA last. We, we might see an MIT one, two. Nope, it was Jake Gladio from Trine. I'm interested to see the breakdown here, but yeah, we're going down to the one thousandths of a second there. Jake Gladio from Trine, officially your second place finisher. Kwaku Nkrumah, the freshman from Rowan, is going to come across also in a 14.25, two thousandths of a second behind Gladio. These are PBs for the top three so far, personal best. Wow. Enoch Ellis, wait, MIT! Wait, we've had a... You know what? We're just going to take a second. We'll we're, wait. We're going to stop announcing names until we see them officially flash on the board. Because right now, okay, I think we're safe now. Enoch Ellis, your national champion from MIT. Jake Gladio from Trine, 1425. The next three are separated by a thousandth of a second each. Kenneth Way, 14.248. Kwaku Nkrumah from Rowan, 14.249. Desmond Gist from Bluffton in fifth, Dayton Love in sixth, Max Cleveland from Simpson in seventh, and Brett Morris from Cortland, SUNY Cortland, there in eighth. We'll take another look at this final. It was too close to call from the beginning. All that action in the middle of your screen, but it was Enoch Ellis, the athlete from MIT, closest to you right there, who dips at the line, and then Jake Gladio from Trine in that runner-up spot. Spaces two, three, and four separated by a thousandth of a second each. What an amazing close final. The 14 seed heading into this event. Enoch Ellis gets your national championship. As we turn our attention to the middle of the field, and it's your All-Americans in the men's 1,500-meter run. The awards from MIT, Riley Macon. In eighth place from Luther with a time of 340.32, Ian Kelly. In seventh place from Wisconsin, Oshkosh with a time of 346.93, Stephen Potter. In sixth place from the University of Rochester with a time of 346.66, Scott Sikorsky. In fifth place from Trinity in Connecticut with a time of 346.54, Travis Martin. In fourth place from Lynchburg with a time of 346.45, Sam Lanessa. In third place from RPI with a time of 346.22, Matthew Lecky. In second place from Haverford with a time of 345.76, Jamie Moreland. And in first place from MIT with a time of 345.18, Ryan Wilson. Congratulations to Ryan Wilson, your national champion in the men's 1,500 meters. Congratulations to his competitors there, the top eight, your All-Americans in the men's 1,500. Wow. So from one screen, we saw Enoch Ellis win a national title to another screen, Ryan Wilson picking up his award. 
That is a massive 26 points in roughly, what, 30 minutes for MIT? Incredible. Yeah, MIT looking really strong right now as these men climb down from the podium. We turn our attention back to the track. We catch our breath after an explosive men's 110 hurdles where two, three, four were separated by a thousandth of a second each. Enoch Ellis from MIT, your surprise winner going from 14th seed to national champion. And now it's the women's turn on the track. Now the women 100 meter hurdle race. Yeah, and we saw it was a slight headwind for the men. A good sign that if things shift a little bit, it won't be It'll still stay record eligible win for these women. We have the top three, all conditions as well, but also Michelle Quafo from Coast Guard in lane five, just set the D3 national record yesterday in the prelims of the 100. She's back in the hurdles, but she'll have a tough competition with Bergen Nelson, the defending national champion. She's fifth all time with record eligible wind. She's the indoor 60 meter hurdle record holder as lane six, Emma Lawrence takes some final block starts to get ready. She's got a big day ahead of her, was already on that four by one team. She'll have this and the 400 meter hurdles coming up, but it's an absolutely loaded women's 100 meter hurdle final. We'll take you through it in lane one, Julia Penna of York. She was a pole vault All-American actually yesterday. She was 20th indoors in the 60 meter hurdles and was 11th last year. Anaya Seward of Lynchburg comes into the competition with an all-time best time as well. She is seventh all-time, excuse me, sixth all-time on the hurdle list. And she looks to become an All-American here as she was seventh in the 60 meter hurdles indoors. Kelsey Seelock of Bethel, she's third all-time in that all-conditions list. She was second last year and fifth in the 60 meter hurdles. Bergen Nelson, we've already mentioned her, indoor national champ, reigning national champ, D3 60 meter record holder, has the fastest all-times condition, looking for some legal wind. Michelle Quafo, Coast Guard, just broke that 100 meter record. She was fourth in the 60 meter hurdles indoors, fifth in the flat 100, but nothing in the 100 hurdles last year. Emma Lawrence finished as an All-American last year, was third in the 60 meters indoors, sixth last year. Chloe Yoder of Susquehanna comes in this competition as her first nationals, and Laura Matthews rounds out the field as she was third last year and sixth indoors. An absolutely loaded field. Yeah, hard to pick a favorite in this field. Definitely expecting to see a strong start from Quafo after setting that record in the 100. That's pure speed, but now we have hurdles to deal with. I won't be surprised if there is a national record here or not. Win stay fresh for us, stay legal, and we'll see something fast. Keep your eye on the clock, 1360. And here we go, one of the deepest fields ever in the women's 100 meter hurdles steps into their blocks. And they're up, it's Quafo in orange with a strong start. She hits the hurdles first. She's got Nelson on her inside. Nelson appears to be pulling away just a little bit. Sealock also looking strong, but it's Nelson with an edge on the field. She takes the last hurdle in first. I believe it's Nelson from Gustavus Adolphus. 13.36, show us the win. It could be a new D3 record. Oh, oh. again, but still another fantastic time for Bergen Nelson. Can't catch the right wind. Wins her second straight national title in the 100 meter hurdles. 13.37 adds to her history as she continues to have some of the best all conditions times in the nation. She, her PR over with the win is 13.32. So she has the top two times in D3 history, all conditions. 13.32, 13.37. Wow, Brigham Nelson adds to her historic 
Division Three hurdles career. Nelson got out to a really strong start there, hit the first hurdle in first. We'll take another look now. There Nelson is in black in the middle of your screen, and she left no doubt in that one. She, she handled a strong challenge from Sealock on the inside. Quafo also running well there, but nobody could challenge Nelson. 13.37 and a plus 2.8 wind. She is your national champion. Stewart, it's, it played out, it played out the two athletes in the middle of the track taking it. Congratulations to Bergen Nelson. We turn our attention to the middle of the track once again where we will award the 1500 meter All-Americans to our women. In fifth place from Washington University with a time of 423.55, Ifu Dunn. In fourth place from Washington University with a time of 423.44, Emily Conkus. In third place from MIT with a time of 423.10, Jillian Roder. In second place from the University of Chicago with a time of 422.97, Maddie Kelly. And in first place from Emory University with a time of 422.16, Annika Urban. Congratulations to your national champion, Annika Urban from Emory and your field of all Americans, your top eight there in the middle of your screen. We're gonna step back here from St. John Fisher University and we'll be back with more from the 2023 Division Three outdoor track and field national championships. Back to the Policini Track and Field Complex in Rochester, New York, hosted by St. John Fisher. It's the 2023 Division Three Outdoor Track and Field National Championships. We just saw the 110 hurdles and the 100 hurdles go down on the track, and we're back. Our next event on the track is going to be the 400 meter, but we are going to actually take a look down in the infield now where the men's 4x100 All-Americans are taken to the podium. Great shot of the crowd here at St. John Fisher University. And here are your All-Americans in the men's 4x100 meter relay. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a bunch of young men climbing up on the podium for their awards. We want to bring your attention down to the podium to Joe as he presents the awards for the men's 4x100 meter relay. Presenting these awards from Wisconsin Lacrosse, Matt Gordy. In seventh place with a time of 41.34 seconds, Emory University. In sixth place from Texas Lutheran with a time of 41.03, Texas Lutheran. In fifth place with a time of 40.84 seconds, Mount Union. In fourth place with a time of 40.58 seconds, Wisconsin Oshkosh. In third place with a time of 40.41 seconds, John Carroll University. In second place with a time of 40.14 seconds, Rowan University. And in first place with a winning time of 39.96 seconds, Wisconsin Lacrosse. Congratulations to your 4 by 100 meter relay champions. Congratulations to the squad from lacrosse taking home that championship. We've got a lot of athletes crowded up onto that podium. Yeah, what an incredible 4 by one we saw. Both 4 by ones are great. There's a little bit of a DQ. There's a protest period, and so that's why there's only seven teams up there right now. Wisconsin lacrosse broke that record in the prelims. Now looking atop the podium to add a trophy to that. But now as we move forward in our program at the Division Three Championships, we move right along back to the track and the one lap crew is hitting 
to their lanes to get set to run the 400 meter final. And we have the defending national champion back. Eric Gregory of Gallaudet won last year in a blazing time. He ran even faster in the prelims this weekend and looking to add another title and bring it back to Gallaudet. If you watched last year, you may know Gallaudet is the school for the deaf and hard of hearing. When he won that D3 title last year, he became the fastest deaf athlete in the world, in world history, an incredible feat. We'll see him in lane four, and his coach helps him get set, and you'll see that here once they go into their blocks. But let's introduce you to the rest of the field. In lane one, we have Jordan Dean of Ohio Northern. He finished second in the OAC on a big personal best, came in as the sixth seed. Garrett Clark in lane two from OAC School, John Carroll. He was fifth last year in the 200, moving up in the distance. Lane three, Jahari Jones of Barry. This is his national debut and had a personal best in the prelims. Eric Gregory, as we mentioned, a defending national champion. Big personal best in the prelim in lane four. Matt McBride, the number one seed headed into this championships. Eighth indoors, fourth last year. Also set the 500 and 600 D3 national records indoors. Will be in lane five. Tyrell Pierce of Knox will be in lane six. He's from Knox. As I mentioned, he was fifth indoors, tenth last year. So looking to become an All-American here outdoors. DJ Anderson of Benedictine. He's back. He's the indoor runner-up, fifth in 2022. And Amara Conte rounds out the field from Rowan. He was a part of that indoor 4x4 D3 record and was also the indoor runner-up. The favorites have looked really good so far in this event. Eric Gregory set a personal best in the prelim, 46.13. But right behind him was our second or number one seed, Matt McBride from Mount Union. And so you'll see those two and four or five. Matt McBride looked really composed. I mean, as did Eric Gregory. We'll see if that run from Gregory took anything out of his legs, but I'm expecting a battle between those two athletes. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Plus, you throw in DJ Anderson, who was the indoor runner-up last year, Amara Conte. It's just an absolutely loaded field, and we'll have it in the middle of the track there between Eric Gregory and Matt McBride. Speaking of Matt McBride, he wants this to go fast. We've only seen a handful of Division Three athletes break 46 seconds in D3 history. They're looking to become adding to that list. Four athletes are at 46 flat or faster. Three have officially broken the mark. Eric Gregory climbs into the blocks next to his coach who will give him the signal when the gun goes off. Gregory already eating up the stagger on Matt McBride, the number one seed coming into this. The championship record, 45-29, held by Andrew Rock. But here comes Matt McBride kind of edging back into it. But Eric Gregory looking very strong through this first 200 meters or so. We'll see what the competition has for him. But his lead is increasing as they head around this final turn. He'll look down the home stretch. The finish line is waiting for him. The defending national champion looking strong. But what does Matt McBride from Mount Union have? Can Matt McBride run him down the final 10 meters? It's going to be Eric Gregory, defending Eric Gregory. national champion, breaking 46 seconds, becoming the fourth man in D3 history to break the time. He becomes the third fastest runner in D3 history, over 400 meters, 45-93 for Eric.
Go hard, immediately making up the stagger on the number one seed, Matt McBride. I was holding my breath. I wasn't sure how much he would have left for that home straight. We saw Matt McBride start to eat back into his lead, but he had enough to hold off Matt McBride. Eric Gregory from Gallaudet, 45-9-3, your national champion. Wow. You know, he came into this not seated number one. I don't even think he broke 46 seconds during the regular season. As we take a look at the finish line here, or the home stretch, I should say, Eric Gregory and a hard-charging Matt McBride almost had him, but Eric Gregory had just enough to hold off for his second straight national title. Eric Gregory was the 17th seed coming into this. 47-43 was his seed time. And he runs 45-93. You see Coach there taking, taking the shoes off for him. He knows he's, <laughs> he knows he's pretty tired. I, I saw Matt McBride cross the line, kind of clap his hands. You know, he wonders if he had 10 more meters, what could have happened. Wow, what, what a final in the 400. Our attention now turns to the infield, where the men's 110 hurdles field will receive their All-American awards. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the podium area. We've got your award winners for the men's 110 meter hurdles. Down to Joe. Presenting the awards from MIT, Derek Russo. In eighth place from Cortland State with a time of 14.64, Brett Morse. In seventh place from Simpson, Iowa with a time of 14.47, Max Cleveland. In sixth place from Wartburg with a time of 14.42, Dayton Young. In fifth place from Bluffton with a time of 14.41, Desmond Gist. In fourth place from Rowan University with a time of 14.25, Kwaku Nkroma. In third place from MIT with a time of 14.25, Kenneth Way. In second place from Trine University with a time of 14.25, Jake Gladio. And in first place from MIT with a time of 14.22 seconds, Enoch Ellis. Enoch Ellis keeps the 110 hurdles championship in-house at MIT. Congratulations to your All-Americans and the men's 110 meter hurdles. We're just recovering from an electric final in the men's 400 where Eric Gregory from Gallaudet breaks 46. Sets a personal, another personal best after coming in as a 17 seed. He finishes in 45.93 over Matt McBride from Mount Union, finishing in 46.04. Great shot of the crowd here at the Policini Track and Field Complex here in Rochester, New York. These championships hosted by St. John Fisher University. It's a beautiful day here, and next on the track, we have our women 400-meter dash. Wow, third all-time for Eric Gregory here, and we're going to welcome back some historic runners for the women's 400 as well as we move things along here. Man, we told you this was going to be a crazy weekend, and it is. We'll, have, we'll feature four athletes in the top 25 in this final. Kayla Armstrong of Concordia, Chicago. She's eighth all-time. Alyssa Fadenauer of Loris is 12th all-time. Kennedy Waite of Mount Union is 16th all-time, and Susan Bonsbach of Rochester is 22nd all-time. They will face off against each other here in this women's 400-meter final. Kayla Armstrong comes in as your number one seed after the prelims. She qualified 54, 54.74 to get that big, big Q. Now holds the facility record, of course, after her was Kennedy Waite and 55-2-9. So we'll expect to see a huge battle here, but do not count out 
Alyssa Fadenhauer, 54.81 to qualify for this final, and she's definitely one of the favorites. Yeah, Simone Wilson won the 400 meter hurdles last year. Kayla Armstrong won this event last year. Both teammates from Concordia, Chicago. We saw the defending national champion, Eric Gregory, win back to back. Can Kayla Armstrong do the same? This time she'll have her teammate with her. We spoke with them last year individual champions in different events now combining forces in this race they'll be in lane one and four in those maroon singlets it's a fast day on the track for the sprint slightly breezy but nice and warm down there for the sprinters legs so we've been treated to some really fast times so far the biggest underdog in this competition is marina miller she was the 13th seed Everyone else is kind of in that top 10. There's only two people, her and Simone Wilson, outside of that top eight that are in this competition. So a pretty loaded field here. Yeah, so underdogs in lanes one and two there if you're looking for somebody to cheer for at home. But don't count out Kennedy Waite. She was on that four by one already. She was your indoor 200 meter champion. But Lauren Phillips of Johns Hopkins. She's going to need to help get some points for her team as well. And Susan Bonsbach is a veteran as well. She was fourth outdoors. Lindsay Novak was 13th indoors. Bonnauer is a 2022 indoor champ. She was third last year. Lauren Phillips was runner-up indoor nationals. And Marina Miller has been on that 4x4 for MIT. So an incredible field here for you, for your entertainment. And we continue to watch greatness unfold at the Division Three track and field level. Let's see, can we see teammates go 1-2? We saw it indoors in the 800. There's an opportunity to do it here. We just saw the MIT men in the 110 hurdles go 1-3. We saw the Warburg Steeplers go 2-3 and 1-4. There's been some great teammate duos here so far in this championships. As they finally get their blocks situated here. We're right on schedule. Love that, Stu. I think they're waiting for this triple jumper to pass so they can get things going here. As he takes down the approach, the starter looks back onto the track and tells them to take their blocks or on their marks. And we're away in this women's 400 meter final. Kennedy Waite out quick in lane five, already eating up the stagger on the outside lanes. Let's see if she can hold on and put she's, in the pressure. She's making up all the staggers. Kayla, putting the pressure on Kayla Armstrong now. What can Alyssa Fadenauer do of Morris? But here comes Kayla Armstrong kind of making up the stagger on the outside lanes. We'll get a better idea once they come around this turn where things stand. But Kennedy Waite, Kayla Armstrong, and Alyssa Fadenauer look to be one, two, three as we head down the home stretch. It's Kennedy Waite, your 200 meter champion, pushing the defending national champion. But Kayla Armstrong reminds her why she's the defending national champion as they pull even with 25 meters to go. They're locking up. Can Fadenauer take it? But it's Kennedy Waite at the line. Kennedy Waite of Mount Union, 54-33. Wow, what a finish, Kayla Armstrong, 54-62. Kennedy Waite took that out just crazy fast. She made up every stagger. 54.33, your national champion. Kayla Armstrong pulling even with her 
on the home stretch. They were neck and neck. We'll go, we'll go back to a replay here. Here they come, Armstrong pulling up onto Wade's shoulder, and they'll go side by side for a few meters. It was totally up in the air, but in the waning meters of this race, Kennedy Waite rallies to make up just a couple steps over Armstrong and take that national championship. We now turn our attention back to the infield where you'll introduce your All-Americans in the women's 100 hurdles. Dolphin Nathan Harder. In eighth place from York, Pennsylvania, with a time of 14.20, Julia Penna. In seventh place from Wisconsin Lacrosse, with a time of 14.08, Emma Lawrence. In sixth place from Lynchburg, with a time of 13.94, Anaya Seward. In fifth place from Susquehanna with a time of 13.88, Chloe Yoder. In fourth place from Stevens with a time of 13.74, Laura Matthews. In third place from Bethel with a time of 13.58, Kelsey Seelock. In second place from Coast Guard with a time of 13.56, Michelle Quaffo. And in first place with a time of 13.37 from Gustavus Adolphin, Bergen Nelson. Congratulations to Bergen Nelson, that your national champion in the women's 100 meter hurdles. And congratulations to all of our All-Americans in that event, great shot of Bergen Nelson there from Gustavus Adolphus. She takes the national championship. Stu, we're up here just recovering from what was an amazing battle between Kennedy Waite and Kayla Armstrong in the waning meters of that women's 400 meters. I just can't imagine, you know, you're going as hard as you can for a lap right there, draw, thinking you're in the lead, getting caught, and then having the strength and the perseverance to push a little bit harder in that final 50 meters when you know your legs are absolutely burning to pull ahead to win her second national title. Here's the net, another turn. Here's another look at the final turn. As you see Kayla Armstrong pulling ahead, Alyssa Fadenauer in the background trying to catch them. Kayla Armstrong gets a slight advantage, but in the final 30 meters or so, Kennedy Waite pulls ahead and stays ahead for the final five to take home her second national title. And she'll be back later on in this two, for the 200 meter final as well. Armstrong just tied up a little bit in the last 10 or 15 meters, and that was enough to give Kennedy Waite room to move ahead. So the sprints are coming and coming and coming. Congratulations to those athletes in the women's 400. But now we turn our attention to the marquee event in track and field. It's the men's and women's 100-meter dash. First up are the men, and Stu, we've been almost guaranteed a record attempt in this race. Yeah, hopefully the win plays in our favor, but we do have the national champion from last year. We have the, uh, the D3 record holder of Sam Blaskowski in lane four, but he'll have some stiff competition in this final as we'll have Shek Triori dropping down from his 400 meter indoor title to the 100. He's coming in with the number one seed from prelims, excuse me, number two time in prelims. He'll take on Blaskowski. He's the 200 meter outdoor record holder as well. So two record holders, the 100 and the 200, facing off here, and they'll face off later as well. Jalen Hobbs of Rose Holman will be in lane one. Christian Campbell of CMS in lane two. Carson Rantanen of Greenville in three, Sam Blaskowski in four, Shaq Triori in five, Kevin Arthur in six, he's from St. John's, TJ Clayton of Rhodes in seven, and CJ Anderson of Greenville in eight. We know Blaskowski has that D3 record speed, 10.16 is absolutely elite, but he's been really busy. He was just part of a four by one championship team for lacrosse, and so He's been through the rounds. What does he have left in his legs? Yeah, and they had a, there was a, a protest in that 4x1, so they were sitting in the tent for a while there. Not sure what his warm-up situation looks like, but that's going to kind of mess with you a little bit if you're off your routine. But 
knowing Sam, I don't think that's going to affect him. And him and Shaq are going to have a, a battle there in the middle of your track there. Four and five, the 100-meter record holder, the 200-meter record holder, trying to become the fastest man in D3. We'll see the fastest woman be crowned next. Yeah. Multiple events, nothing unusual for Blaskowski. He's done this before. He's been a point machine for lacrosse since he joined up with them. Don't be, don't be counting out lane eight, CJ Anderson. He was the indoor runner-up in the 60. He'll be in lane eight, though, so kind of on the far end of your screen, on the left side, he'll be away from Sheck and Sam Blaskowski. One last check for the, from the official there. Takes a look at the watch. It's scheduled to get these guys rolling here at 2.30 local time. If we know our officials love to be punctual, not early, so we will stay here for another 30 seconds or so until they climb into their blocks and get ready. Just as I check out the flags on the infield here, it's looking like we're going to have a tailwind. The one's whipping over there. It's been kind of swirling around today, and so... We'll hope to get legal win, but honestly, with a nice little tailwind, we might see something crazy. Yeah, we'll pull up that all conditions list for you just so we know. We have both ready to go just in case. All right, here we go. Who is the fastest athlete in Division Three? And we're up. It's a battle in the middle of your trek. Sam Blaskowski is out really well, but Sheck Traore is now closing in on his shoulder. They're neck and neck. Traore seems to have an inch as we hit the line. I believe Traore has it. It might have been Blaskowski. He thinks he has it. Blaskowski thinks he has it. We're not at a great it's angle Blaskowski. here. It's Blaskowski. It is Blaskowski. And a and new D3 record. He breaks his record of 10-16. It's now 10-13. Wow. The wind there, just legal, 1.9. Shek Traore came up on his shoulder about 50 meters in, but Blaskowski had another gear, tough angle for us up in the booth, but Blaskowski really not leaving much doubt that he is the fastest athlete in Division Three history and at these championships, obviously. Congratulations, Sam Blaskowski is just picking up trophies today. Check right. Here's another look now. Sam Blaskowski there in lane of four. It gets an absolutely amazing start. Check Traore tries to eat up some ground, but just doesn't quite have it from that angle. It's a clear victory for Blaskowski. Arms waving. You see him just absolutely blast off around that turn. Probably a good 200 time there if we could have got a clock on it. Nice embrace there between one and two. We'll see Sheck later on in that 200. He'll definitely be hungry for a title now. Yeah, Sheck ties. The old record that Blaskowski broke of 1018. So now we just saw the number one and tied for second in D3 history. Go at it in an all time race. 1013, 1018, number one and two in D3 history. Carson Rintanen of Greenville in third. Jalen Hobbs of Rose Holman in fourth. CJ Anderson of Greenville in fifth. TJ Clayton of Rhodes in sixth. Kevin Arthur from St. John's in seventh. And Christian Campbell of CMS in eighth. As Sam Blaskowski gets off his shoes, he has a 200 meter later today, and that will be an all-time battle as well. We'll see him, Shaq, and J.P. Vaught later as he gets a big hug from his coach. We'll but now it. we'll move over to the podium for the 400 meter men. The 400 meter dash. Down to Joe. Presenting the awards, Coach Byron Moore from Gallaudet University. In eighth place with a time of 48.03 seconds from Ohio Northern, Jordan Dean. In seventh place from Rowan with a time of 47.99, Amara Conte. In sixth place from Knox University with a time of 47.72, Tyrell Pierce. 
In fifth place from Barry University with a time of 47.36, Jahari Jones. In fourth place from Benedictine with a time of 47.36, DJ Anderson. In third place from John Carroll University with a time of 47.13, Garrett Clark. In second place from Mount Union with a time of 46.04, Matt McBride. And in first place with a winning time of 45.93 seconds from Gallaudet University, Eric Gregory. Field. Congratulations to Gregory there. Eric Gregory, your national champion in the men's 400. Raising up the trophies. What a field established here in the 400. An all time great race. Third all time for Eric Gregory. He might have had some revenge as he just missed qualifying in that 200, but now is a national champion once again. Sam Blaskowski, your men's 100-meter champion, the fastest man in Division Three, and now will crown the fastest woman in Division Three. The women's 100-meter dash is down on the track now, adjusting their blocks, taking some final stride outs, and this field is loaded. Yeah, we have the reigning national champion in Bella Hogue. We have the indoor 60-meter champion in Adelia Coleman. We have the new D3 record holder in Michelle Quafo. She was just the runner-up in their hurdles, and now she's back here for the 100-meter. She set that in the prelims, 11.62, takes down a record from 1999. Then we also have... Gabri Meschino of U Chicago, just absolutely loaded. Jasmine Crawford came into this as a top seed. Tina Shelton was a number one seed. Ava David of Elmhurst, the names and lists go on. And Lauren Jarrett, coming in with the fastest time, 2.2 win though, ran 11.60. So we'll see, we have some legal win for the men. We'll have the reigning national champion, the D3 record holder, and Lauren Jarrett all in this race trying to go after the record, trying to add a title, and Adelia Coleman looking to add a third title to her resume as well. Yeah, win just barely legal in that men's 100, 1 1.9 for the wind there. So we'll just see. It's kind of swirling in here. It's going to be impossible to predict, but either way, we're going to see an absolute battle over 100 meters. Tina Shelton is third on the all conditions lift. All conditions lift running 11.54. Gabby Mosquito is ninth in the 60. Adelia, a two-time 60-meter champ, fourth last year. Lauren Jarrett was sixth in the 60 indoors. She also qualified for the 200-meter later. Isabel Hogue, your reigning defending champion. Jasmine Crawford is 12th all-time, also 10th in the 60. Quaffo, we've already mentioned, she was fifth outdoors, fourth in the 60-meter hurdles. Runner-up today already, plus the D3 record holder. And Ava David, who is 10th and 11th in the 200 and 400 indoors, and was also on that 4x1 team from earlier today that became an All-American with their seventh-place finish. Yeah, really the winner could come from any of these lanes today. Bella Hogue, your reigning defending champion, was a little hurt this year, only had a couple of races, was on the outside looking in as she came to the last chance meet, gets in, and now back into the final. So we'll see. Health is on the rise. She's ready to con contend for her title. It appears we're going to hold these athletes here for a few minutes to stay on schedule. We're about two minutes away here as the nerves and tension build. We saw the fastest man. Now we're about to see the fastest woman in D3. Can't imagine what is going through their mind right now. 
from a team perspective, Lauren Jarrett looking to help out lacrosse. They currently are in third right now behind Loris. Loris doesn't have anyone in this final, so they can make – they can chip away at the lead right now. It's Loris 38, MIT 34, Wisconsin lacrosse 32 and a half, and Wash U 31 for your top four. I love this uh, – the routine the starter has, she just sits there and waits and stands and stares at the athletes until she takes her little stand so she goes above to blow the gun. And now the other official makes sure that all eight women who were standing there for the past five minutes are the right women. So that way we are underway here in the women's 100 meter dash. They get the signal on your marks in the deepest 100 meter field in Division Three history climbs into the blocks. The gun fires and we're away and the women's 100. Quaffo with a good start, but Hogue on her outside is closing well. Quaffo looks to be running away with this. Jarrett on her inside in a hard charge, but it's gonna be Quaffo, your national champion in the women's 100 meter dash. 11.49, let's see the wind here. 11.49, she breaks her D3 record from prelims. Oh my, Michelle Quaffo, have a day. She is stunned. 11.49, a championship record. A amazing day for Michelle Quaffo, a runner-up in their hurdles, now a national champion in the 100, 11.49. Michelle Quaffo of Coast Guard left no doubt about that one. 11.49, obviously a personal best, but a national record for the athlete from Coast Guard. And the orange singlet just streaking down the middle of the track. There she is there in lane five. Isabella Hogue on her outside. Lauren Jarrett on her inside. She charges down lane five. Never in doubt. Michelle Quaffo takes the championship to Coast Guard. Wow. What a weekend for Michelle Quaffo. 11.49. Unbelievable. The wind in our favors today. An absolutely great field. A wow. We'll run you through that top 100 list one more time. But before we do that, we'll go down to the award stand to feature the women's 400 meter. It's time to go down to the podium for the awards for the women's 400 meter dash. Joe. Presenting the awards from Mount Union, Tyler Neff in eighth place with a time of 58.66 from Concordia University, Simone Wilson. In seventh place with a time of 56.58 from the University of Rochester, Susan Bansbach. In sixth place from MIT with a time of 56.45, Marina Miller. In fifth place from North Central with a time of 56.25, Lindsay Novak. In fourth place from Johns Hopkins University with a time of 55.96, Lauren Phillips. In third place with a time of 54.80 from Loris, Alyssa Faudenhauer. In second place with a time of 54.62 from Concordia University, Kayla Armstrong. 
And in first place with a winning time of 54.33 from Mount Union, Kennedy Waite. Here, top 10 scores for the women. Welcome back to the Paulistini Track and Field Complex at St. John Fisher University in Rochester, New York. Kennedy Waite just receives her 400 meter national champion trophy. Raises them high as she takes down Kayla Armstrong, the defending national champion. We just saw a D3 record in the 100 meter dash on the women's side. Michelle Quaffo, 11.49. Lauren Jarrett broke Michelle Quaffo's record from earlier. And here we go again with the start. You see she got to a great start with her and Lauren Jarrett. And Lauren Jarrett went with her. But the last closing speed of Michelle Quaffo wasn't enough. Takes home her national title after, with, after becoming the runner-up in the hurdles as well. Wow, an all-time great race. Michelle Quaffo ran 11.62 to set the D3 record in the prelims. Her and Lauren Jarrett go under that record. So the number one and number two all-time in the 100, as you see Kennedy Waite with her coach there. Incredible performances all around the track so far today. I'm losing track of how many records we've had. We've had the men's 4x1 record. Victoria Kadiri in the triple jump. Quaffo in the 100. Blaskowski in the 100. And I'm sure we're going to see a few more here soon. So coming up next, we're going to see the men's 800-meter run in roughly five minutes. And we're going to kind of preview who's in that uh, field here as we're going to see the men's 1,500-meter champion returning. And we feel like we just saw him on the track not too long ago. Yeah, Ryan Wilson is doing a heck of a job here this weekend in the 1,500-meter. We already won it, and now we're going to see him in the eight, but he's got some strong competition. Yeah, he's been cruising through the prelims this weekend. Actually looked really good in the 1500 as well. We get your men's 800 set up here. It took a sub 150 to qualify for this. So one of the deepest, if not the deepest, 800 final of all time on the men's side. Yeah, we'll see Mike Jasa from Loris. He's third all time on the list. Ryan Wilson is fourth all time on the list. Ryan won last year's outdoor race. Mike Jasa won in 2021, added an indoor title this year. So it'll be great to watch them face off. But Bennett Booth Genthy out of Pomona Pitzer is in this race. He's seventh all time with his seed of 148.31. Garrett Lenners is in the race. He's 14th all time, 148.69. Carter Oberfell of Loris, Mike Jasa's teammate, also on that all-time list in 16th. So an incredible field for you. Sam Lanezo was also an All-American in the 1500. He'll be in this race. Kale Schumann, the freshman from Wisconsin Lacrosse, who kind of led his prelim, is here. And Noah Jorgensen from Central College will round out the field. Noah Jorgensen came here with a couple of teammates. He just saw his teammate Caleb Silver take home an All-American performance. He was 11th in the indoors in 2022, so Jorgensen looking to become an All-American here this year. PR'd to get into this final. Athletes now walking down the stretch, so got a few more minutes here before we get underway in the men's 800. It'll be interesting to see how tactics play into this right now. You know, from a team standpoint, MIT has a commanding lead. There's still much to go here. We with Blaskowski adding 10 points for lacrosse. They'll have Ethan Gregg later. MIT versus lacrosse here in this 800. It's hard to go bet against the 800 indoor national record holder. Yeah, just saw him glance up to his family who's seated just, uh, just on the other side of our window here and he tried not to notice him, but I saw him make quick eye contact as they erupted into applause. So, you know, he's got to be tired from the 1500 earlier, less about an hour ago. Um, but he's done this before. He knows how to manage his energy. And 
these athletes approach their blocks. Saw Sam Blaskowski on the infield there. Clap for Kale Schumann, firing him up. He's a big team player. He just won his 100 meters, already getting his teammate fired up. Yeah, Blaskowski's seemingly limitless energy for the 100 meter champ. He's not only out there winning championships himself, but he's all over the track uh, as a cheering squad as well. So if you're six guys in this field not named Ryan Wilson or Sam Laneza, you got to take this race out hard and make them hurt. That's what I was thinking too. There's no tactics at play here in this 800. Let's just see who's got the legs, especially if you're feeling if you're feeling fresh, you have a chance to test Ryan Wilson who's been under some pressure today, so you can get out there and just see if you have what it takes. You, you really have nothing to lose by making this a hard race. Yeah, I, I was speaking with Bennett Booth Genthy in our hotel last night. I asked him, you know, you're indoor runner-up in the mile. Why aren't you doing the 1500 this year? And he just flat out said, I just wanted to do the 800. It's, it's one of my favorite events. I was an 800 specialist in high school. I've never finished worse than third ever in an 800 race. So we'll see a rematch of that indoor mile here, but now we'll take it down to 800 meters. You see Bennett Booth, Jinsey from Pomona Pitzer there in lane two. Lane assignments on your screen now. Mike Jason, the indoor national champion in six. I know he didn't take too kindly to not winning in 2022 after winning in 2021. He's run an all-time great time. I saw him earlier in the four by four getting that Loris team through to the final. But we are underway. Waterfalls start here in the men's 800. They start in lanes. We'll cut in on the backstretch here as they approach these cones. Mike Jasa looks to be your early leader. Yeah, him and Carter, Ar Carter Oberfell go straight to the front little team tax that play as Ryan Wilson then goes on the shoulder of Mike Jasa with Kale Schumann and Garrett Lenners right behind them. In the 1500, we saw Ryan Wilson go straight to the back just to avoid trouble and be in a good position, but he knows he has to be on it here, and so he sits right behind Mike Jasa. Mike Jasa not afraid to take the pace on. Yeah, he did this at his home meet, his last meet as a Loris Duhawk in the Rock Bowl. He ran 147. He's confident, he feels great with his training, and now him and Ryan Wilson head to the Bell Lab, 54 mid. Oberfell, his teammate in third, but Ryan Wilson and Mike Jasa are now pulling away slightly from the field. We'll see if Oberfell can close this gap or if anybody wants to go around. But Mike Jasa is making this a hard pace. It's within his range, and Ryan Wilson is tracking his every step. The last two 800-meter champions duking it out right now with 200 meters to go. Mike Jasa versus Ryan Wilson, two of the all-time greats in the 800, third and fourth all-time duking out over the last 150 meters. Mike Jason hasn't seen anybody in front of him yet. Ryan Wilson will see if he can swing onto his shoulder. We enter the last 100 meters. It's Mike Jason in the lead, but Ryan Wilson now coming up onto his shoulder. It's a hard charge from Ryan Wilson in lane three. Does Mike Jason have what it takes to close? No, Ryan Wilson, your 800 meter national champion. Wow, Ryan Wilson does it again. 20 team points for MIT, a huge day for Ryan Wilson and the Ryan Wilson family. They're sitting right in front of us. They're going wild. What a smart tactic race there. Mike Jason made it pretty honest. It took 149.69 to be within the top four. So an incredible field. He absolute last 100 meters and took it down the home stretch. Yeah, let's give a shout out here to Garrett Leonard, your third place finisher. He closed so hard in that last one. Here it is, the replay. Mike Jasa, who led every step of this race until the last hundred. Ryan Wilson pulls onto his shoulder with 90 to go and just blasts off in lane three. Mike Jasa has no answer. Ryan Wilson backs up his championship from the 1500 with the championship in the eight. Arms outstretched, takes it for MIT. Wow, okay, let's turn our attention now back to the infield, the men's 100 meter dash. Presenting the awards from Wisconsin Lacrosse, Matt Gordy. In eighth place from CMS with a time of 10.48 seconds, Christian Campbell. In seventh place from St. John's, Minnesota with a time of 10.44, Kevin Arthur. 
in sixth place from Rhodes College with a time of 10.44, T.J. Clayton. In fifth place with a time of 10.42 from Greenville, C.J. Anderson. In fourth place from Rose Hallman with a time of 10.39, Jalen Hobbs. In third place from Greenville with a time of 10.35, Carson Rantanen. In second place from Ramapo with a time of 10.18 seconds, Shekna Trior. And in first place from Wisconsin Lacrosse with a winning time of 10.13 seconds, Sam Blaskowski. Sam Blaskowski, your national champion from lacrosse. Let's take a look at how it went down. Sam Blaskowski there in lane four. Shek Traore on his outside in lane five. They pull even briefly, but Sam Blaskowski blasts off and leaves no doubt that he is the fastest man in Division Three. Arms outstretched, he takes off around the turn. Congratulations to Sam Blaskowski and all of your All-Americans in the men's 100-meter dash. Wow, Blaskowski just having a day, having a season. Lowers his record to 10:13, but Shek Triori also tying the old record that Blaskowski broke earlier this year. Just incredible. And we see the 100 meter from Michelle Quaffo breaking that record too. Stu, we just saw on the track as we step away from the sprints for a little bit, we saw the men's 800 meter run, Ryan Wilson takes that national championship 148.17 over Mike Jasa who did much of the leading from Loris in that race in 148.93. Anything surprise you about that race? It actually wasn't quite as fast as some of the preliminary times. Yeah, I mean, they have 147 speed. I mean, we're getting a little, uh, what you call, we're getting a little time happy with some of this, but it's not. We're a, getting a little picky. Yeah, we're, we're getting, getting <laughs> a little picky. I mean, 148 in a D3 final is still blazing, as you know. But, yeah, it didn't go out in, like, a 51, 52. They went through in 54 mid, so almost a negative split if the, if the splits are correct here. I guess I was a little surprised that more of the field didn't go with it. Yeah, they went 54-8, 53-3, so an unconventional way to run an 800-meter, negative splitting it. Interesting tactic here, but I think it worked out well for Ryan Wilson. I think that's how he kind of won. It fell into Ryan Wilson's hands. Yeah, absolutely. It just He kind of played the opposite hand that he did in the 15, where in the first lap or two, he was really just hanging out in the back. Um, he decided to take this one on from the front, not do the leading himself. Allowed Mike Jason, the Mike Jason train to go around the track and then kick at the end. So super exciting there. Ryan Wilson gets his second national championship, 15 and 8. But we're not done with the 800s quite yet. We still have our women's national champion to crown. They'll be stepping up to their blocks here any minute now. We see them at the end of the track. They'll be making the walkover soon. Yeah, we'll have reigning indoor champion Emma Kelly. She's also the runner-up from last year outdoor. Her and Aoife Dunn are hoping to go 1-2 again like they did in indoors, but they'll have some stiff competition. Washu actually has three in this race with Ali Sarusi qualifying from a seated time outside of the top eight. So having three of them here is great. She was 12th coming into this. Lily Campbell was 11. The rest were seated within the top eight. So a pretty strong field from the regular season here now for this final. We'll introduce you to them as they walk down the home stretch. You'll have Hannah Nealon of Tufts. Lily Campbell of Wartburg, Cena Madigan of Wisconsin Oshkosh, Emma Kelly Washu, Aoife Dunn Washu, Maddie Hannon of Lacrosse, Cindy Packer WPI, and Ali Sarusi of Washu. A, a familiar name is Sydney Packard. She's had some eligibility with her grad school and COVID, and she's back. She had she faced some injuries in her career. She's been an All-American a couple of times as well, and now is back in her final race in a WPI singlet. She was 12th last year, 8th in 2021, hoping to end on a high note. Also a big opportunity for Wash U. They enter three athletes in this final. Imagine only eight athletes in the nation 
get to make this final start line and three of them from the same school at Wash U. Yeah, and that's going to be big for the team battle. Right now, Wisconsin Lacrosse will have Maddie Hannon, but they're up by 40 and a half. Loris has 38, MIT has 34, Wash U with 31. So they can make a big jump here in the team standings. There's still a lot of racing still to go, but you'll put yourself in great position with three scores right now. So keep an eye on those gray singlets, the red shorts. Kelly, Dunn, and Sarusi of Wash U have not just their own personal ambitions to chase here, but some serious team points on the line as well. Wonder if we might even see some team tactics. Do they have the numbers to pull something like that off. The practices must be so fun for them. Three. They, they oh, must be tired. Yeah. <laughs> they get to go against, you know, think about it. Ali Sarusi gets to go up against the indoor national champion and the indoor runner up. So be able to be pushed like that in practice and now be here with them, she has to have confidence that she belongs. Yeah, absolutely. You see that you see your teammates doing it if you're up there in practice. I mean, today's just another just another time trial for them. Don't be surprised if Emma Kelly and Aoife Dunn go straight to the front here. We did, though, see Aoife Dunn in that 1500. We'll see how much she has left. Maddie, Maddie Hannon from lacrosse kind of holding the burden for the team scores now against the three Wash U runners. And we're quick on the gun now. It took a sub 211 to make it into this final and it is Wash U. Is that Kelly out to the early lead? Yep. Emma Kelly out early as we anticipated here. She's going to go for it. This is her only race. She'll be in the 4x4 later, but she is relatively fresh compared to the rest of the field. Kelly out to a huge early lead. About 10, maybe more meters as we hit the 200 mark. Lily Campbell there in second from Wartburg. Yeah, Emma Kelly fifth all time with her seed of 204.41. We'll see if she tries to go after it. It's a tough, tough championship record of 202 set last set in 2021 from Esther Sealing. But Lily Campbell, Aoife Dunn, and then here comes Ali Sarusi moving up to fourth with Hannah Nealon as Sydney Packard, Maddie Hannon, and Cena Madigan all round out the six, seven, eight position. It looks like Aoife Dunn has managed to get the inside track there over Lily Campbell, but still Emma Kelly pulling away from this field. She's setting a hot pace. We'll see if they're able to gain any ground down the back stretch. Anything can happen in the 800. Emma Kelly looks really strong right now, and Aoife Dunn, they are trying to repeat what they did indoors, but watch for Maddie Hannon from lacrosse. Went from eighth to sixth right now, putting herself in good position. She's going to stay on the outside as Emma Kelly rounds for home on the final 200 meters. But Cena Madigan of Wisconsin Oshkosh wants to break up the Wash U party. Madigan has been moving up and slates into second over Aoife Dunn. But this is the Emma Kelly show. Emma Kelly has stretched her lead from 10 to 20 plus meters. She hits 100 to go with no doubt in anybody's mind that she will be crowned your national champion here in 2023 and we take a look back to the pack behind her. Yeah, Emma Kelly storming down the finish line. The indoor champion is now your outdoor national champion. 206-47 the flash time. And Maddie Hannon for Wisconsin Lacrosse breaks up the Wash U2. That's massive for Wash U and Lacrosse in the team battle as Maddie Hannon gets 8 points for Lacrosse. What a run there from Emma Kelly. She took off immediately in the first 100 and just continued to stretch her advantage. Some churning there for positions two, three, four. Maddie Hannon from lacrosse gets the runner-up position. Wow, what an interesting tactic there. We kind of knew that was going to happen for Emma Kelly. Aoife Dunn close to making it a one-two finish like the indoor meet, but Maddie Hannon and Cena Madigan had some great kicks. A great day for Aoife Dunn, who just ran that 1,500 meter. We mentioned how it's been a historic day, and so we're going to flip it on over now to the 100 meter podium where Michelle Quaffo, the 100 meter D3 record holder, will receive her award. For the women's 100 meter dash, Joe. Presenting the awards from Coast Guard Academy, Ethan Brown. In eighth place from Nebraska Wesley with a time of 12.47, Isabella Hogue. 
In seventh place from Elmhurst with a time of 12.01, Ava David. In sixth place from Bridgewater, Virginia with a time of 11.89, Adelia Coleman. In sixth place from Wisconsin Whitewater with a time of 11.85, Tina Shelton. In fourth place from Whittier with a time of 11.84, Jasmine Crawford. In third place from the University of Chicago with a time of 11.74, Gabri Moschino. In second place from Wisconsin Lacrosse with a time of 11.61, Lauren Jarrett. And in first place with a winning time of 11.49 seconds from Coast Guard Michelle Quaffo. Michelle Quaffo, your national champion in the women's 100 meters. Let's see how she did it. The athlete from Coast and we, we're looking live at the 800 here where Emma Kelly became a absolute dominant national champion here, pulling away from the rest of the field early, and she would continue to stretch that advantage all the way to the finish line. There she is with 30 or 40 meters over the field. Nobody could chase her down. Emma Kelly from WashU, your national champion in the women's 800. We're going to step away from the Policini Complex here in Rochester, New York. It's a D3 track and field championships. Loris with a time of 151.34, Carter Oberfell. In sixth place from Lynchburg with a time of 151.21, Sam Lanessa. In fifth place from Wisconsin Lacrosse with a time of 150.97, Kale Showman. In fourth place from Pomona Pittsford with a time of 149.69, Bennett Booth Genthy. 
In third place from Nebraska, Wesley with a time of 149.53, Garrett Lenners. In second place from Loris with a time of 148.97, Mike Jasa. And in first place from MIT with a winning time of 148.17, Ryan Wilson. Next award on the track is the men's 400 meter hurdles. Welcome back to the Paulusini Track and Field Complex in Rochester, New York, hosted by St. John Fisher University. It's the 2023 Division Three Outdoor Track and Field National Championships. Up next on the track, we have one of the hardest events in track and field, the 400 meter hurdles. Before the break, we saw some absolutely electric races in the men's and women's 800. We now turn our attention back to the sprinters. It's the men's, men's 400 meter hurdles. They're walking up there. When they get to their blocks, we'll run you down the lane assignments and tell you who to watch out for. An exciting race coming up. We've already seen a few of these athletes in the 100 hurdles. Jake Gladio specifically. Runner up in the 110 hurdles. The 2021 champ from Trine looking to get back atop the podium. We've got a bunch of All Americans in this heat. Cameron Rogers was fifth outdoors last year. Peter Hansen from Middlebury was seventh outdoors last year. Lance Jensen was an All-American in the 200 indoors. Fourth last year, Joel Smith from Bethel. And so we're, we're almost looking at a rematch of some of the top contenders from last year. A lot of these fields are like that. I mean, also too, we have a few people, you mentioned there's an All-American, but Peter Hansen, he came into the season, came into the championship, I would just say, 18th hmm. seed. Cameron Rogers, the 20th seed. And Alps, Philip Phillips Galushi was the 14th seed. So moving on up here. We'll give you the lane assignments there while it's in your, on your screen. Jake Gladio from Trine in one. Marquise Young from Rowan in two. Cameron Rogers from UMass Dartmouth in three. Lance Jensen from SUNY Geneseo in four. Joel Smith from Bethel, he's in five. Ellis Phillips Galucci from Amherst is in six. Jacob Patton from Westminster is in seven. And in lane eight on the outside, Peter Hansen from Middlebury. Yeah, Lance Jensen and Joel Smith in the center of the track there. Jensen came into this championships tied with the number one seed. But Jake Gladio has been had a fantastic season so far, a fantastic meet, and he's looking to continue that right now. You know, he's got to have some confidence here as he was the runner-up in the 110 hurdles. Won that race in 2021. He probably was a little disappointed last year when he was 12th. So out for redemption here this year. Yeah, absolutely. You failed to make a final. That's got to sting. 
and then you sit on that for a year, even though he's had success, as you mentioned, in multiple other events. Marquise Young from Rowan, as we keep mentioning, he's part of that 4x4 that broke the D3 national record. We see him his taped knee there in lane two. He took a fall after the prelim. Looks to be okay, shaking things out. You know, he's a competitive guy. He was 19th, excuse me, he was 16th in the 60-meter hurdles earlier this season indoors. So he's here. Get across the finish line. He's an All-American by sure. He wants more than just being an All-American. It's a fast day out on the track today. So records, if you want to keep an eye out for those, 51.59 is going to be your championship record and your Division Three record, 48.64. As I say that, they get the signal to start climbing into their blocks. And we are away in the men's 400-meter hurdles. Looks to be pretty even around one, but is that Lance Jensen who's made up a bit of the stagger out there? Yeah, it also looks like Joel Smith from Bethel. So it's four and five right now, making up that stagger on this competition. Jensen kind of has a slight lead as we go into the final 200 meters. Him and Joel Smith from Bethel looking to go head-to-head -head here as we have Three, four hurdles remaining. They're going to come even here, but Cameron Rogers from UMass Dartmouth may make things interesting here as it's Jensen and Joel Smith. Two hurdles to go. They are even. It's Lance Jensen with a slight advantage over the last hurdle. It's going to come down to a kick, but here comes Cameron Rogers. But Lance Jensen, your national champion in the 400 meter hurdles. 50.60 for Lance Jensen. Lance Jensen looked great there. 56 point, 50 point six three, excuse me. That's a new championship record in Division Three. A new championship. Lance Jensen looked great, already making up the stagger by that first hurdle and just continued to press his advantage. It was really close with Joel Smith the whole way. And he'll move into seventh. Excuse me, sixth all time. Lance we'll Jensen, sixth all time. Here's that final two, three hurdles. Take a look there. We see Jensen moving over the hurdles well, but Joel Smith coming up on his shoulder. But Lance Jensen was able to sprint off the final hurdle, came down to a kick. Joel Smith couldn't quite make up the ground. Also closing well there, Cameron Rogers from UMass Dartmouth. He's going to finish third in 51 point one four. We said we, we're seeing personal best there for the top five, so that's how you know it was a fast day. These athletes getting the best out of each other, but Lance Jensen there with a fairly dominant performance from Cindy Geneseo. I got a little nervous there because those singlets in the back are the same. I mm. thought I was saying Joel Smith from Bethel was actually from also from Cindy Geneseo, but glad to know that we were correct in the call that Geneseo and Bethel went head-to-head -head there. You get a shot of Joel Smith there, but we're going to take things down now to the award stand for the women's 800 meter as Emma Kelly sits atop the podium. Direct your attention to the podium. We've got your award winners for the women's 800 meter run. Over to Joe. Presenting the awards from Washington University, Gordon Ryder. In eighth place from Washington University with a time of 212.19, Alicia Sarusi. In seventh place from Wartburg with a time of 211.50, Lily Campbell. In sixth place from Tufts with a time of 211.17, Hannah Nealon. In fifth place from WPI with a time of 211.16, Sydney Packard. In fifth place from Washington University with a time of 210.78, Aoife Dunn. In third place from Wisconsin Oshkosh with a time of 210.35, Kina Madigan. 
In second place from Wisconsin Lacrosse with a time of 209.87, Maddie Hannon. And in first place from Washington University with a winning time of 206.47, Emma Kelly. Congratulations to your All-Americans in the women's 800 meters. Congratulations to Emma Kelly, your champion, with a dominant performance pulled away from the gun to secure that trophy. On the track, we just saw the men's 400-meter hurdles, and now we will turn our attention to the women's side. Yeah, that Wash U, they went 1-4-8 Big team points. They're now in the lead, or excuse me, they're only now down by one and a half points to Wisconsin Lacrosse. Loris in third with 38. They're going to be counting on Cassie Parker later on. And now, as we mentioned, Wisconsin Lacrosse, here comes Emma Lawrence hoping to take a small advantage over Wash U again. They're up by a point and a half. They'll have some. They'll have Lauren Jarrett in the 200. Wash will have Conkus in the 5K. They'll have Hannon in the 5K for the lacrosse. So it's going to be really close, and they both have a 5K. Excuse me, both have a 4x4. Four four. Let's introduce you, though, to the women's 400-meter hurdle. It's a great field headlined by Natalia Sawyer. Number three all time, but Bergen Nelson's in this and she just won the 100 meter hurdles and she's looking to add another on the day. Gwen Shepherdson of Sunni Geneseo, she was third outdoors last year. Emma Lawrence was fourth last year. We just saw her get seventh in the 100 meter hurdles. Eliza Brunkaj of TCNJ, she'll be in here. Ren Brown of U Chicago, Caroline Delvecchio was sixth last year, and Fiona Mexico of Colby was ninth in the 400 indoors. Yeah, definitely some star power here. Bergen Nelson, as Stu mentioned, that 100 hurdle champ. Now we'll see if she can replicate in the long hurdle race. Yeah, she'll have tough competition in the first year. Natalia Sawyer of Buffalo State coming in with a 58.61 seed time. But also, I want to shout out Fiona Mexico of Colby. She dropped almost two and a half seconds, or excuse me, a second and a half off of her seed time in the prelims to make it to this final. It took 60.94 seconds to make it to this final. Three women in the, in the middle of your track. Brigham Nelson, Natalia Sawyer, and Emma Lawrence all under 60 seconds for the 400 meter hurdles. Let's see if Natalia Sawyer can go after another record. We've seen four so far this year. She's The record is 58-51, so just a tenth off of that record. That's also the championship record as well. She'll be in all white in lane four. So keep an eye on that. She likes to get out fast and hang on. So we'll see if she can take that game plan into this final. We'll keep an eye on that first set of hurdles. See who gets over it first. We take our final few runouts before they climb into the blocks. Bergen Nelson, Emma Lawrence have been here before. Bergen was the runner-up last year. Wants to add another title for her day. It's going to be a hard weekend for them running in the 100-meter prelims, or the hurdle prelims. This is a prelim. Lawrence is in a 4 by one prelim and a final. Yeah, absolutely. Just pretty much nonstop action over three days. Not a whole lot of time to rest, not for the athletes or your announcers here up in the booth. Proud to bring you guys these events live on NCAA.com. Thanks to John St. John Fisher for hosting these national championships. But for now, eyes back to the track as we wait on the starters. Pistol.
They get the signal to climb into the blocks and will be underway here any moment. We'll see if the first year Natalia Sawyer, how quickly she gets out and how the veterans will react to a quick start. That's Sawyer there in a four. And they're off. Looks like Lawrence maybe with a slight lead. It's too hard to tell in that first hurdle. But out in lane seven is Elijah Brunkaj of TCNJ. She makes up her stagger on lane eight. But here comes Natalia Sawyer drawing even with Emma Lawrence. They're going to round this turn and we'll get a better idea of where things stand. But Elijah Brukaj of TCNJ looking strong early on. Field looking really evenly matched so far as we come up with four hurdles to go. Natalia Sawyer quick over those hurdles and look for Gwen Shepherdson of Senior Geneseo now coming into it. We have four women all there with two hurdles remain. It's Natalia Sawyer, it's Gwen Shepherdson. Shepherdson with a slight advantage over the final hurdle. Oh, oh she, she hits stumbles. it. It's Natalia Sawyer taking advantage of the fall and she'll be a national champion. 58-63, just missing that national title. You gotta feel for Gwen Shepherdson of SUNY Geneseo. Gwen Shepherdson appeared to be closing down the gap and moving into the lead there when she hit the final hurdle. She's up and did finish the race. Natalia Sawyer from Buffalo State is your to the finish line in 58.66. And everyone's consoling Gwen Shepherdson right now, giving her a hug, letting her know that they're there for her. Wow, you know, it's just hard, hard to see. We'll look at the fall here. Gwen Shepherdson is closing hard there. Maybe right that little stumble took her off her steps. Oh. Yeah, it looks like the foot just clipped the hurdle. She chops her steps a couple times and then it goes down. Hard to see as she was closing in on your leader, Natalia Sawyer, down that home stretch. After she hits that hurdle, Natalia Sawyer able to cross the finish line unchallenged. We now turn our attention to the infield where the men's hammer throw will be receiving their All-American trophies. We haven't got to see these gentlemen much today or any of the weight throws, but here today are your Hammer All-Americans presenting the awards, Joe. Presenting the awards is Alex Palascandolo from Widener. In eighth place from Shenandoah with a distance of 58.17 meters, John Kindig. In seventh place from Wisconsin Platteville with a distance of 58.34 meters, Justin Eichler. In sixth place from Wilmington, Ohio with a distance of 58.99 meters, Nathan Borgen. In fifth place also from Wilmington with a distance of 59.12 meters, J.J. Durr. In fourth place from Carthage with a distance of 59.18 meters, Joseph White. In third place from Wisconsin Eau Claire with a distance of 59.71 meters, Jakob Ekwe. In second place from Widener with a distance of 60.07 meters, Alden Littlefield. And in first place, also from Widener, with a winning throw of 63.64 meters, Alex Christeller. Congratulations to Alex Christeller from Widener, your national champion in the men's hammer throw up there with his teammate who finished second, Alden Littlefield, also from Widener. We're going to step away here from St. John Fisher University at the Policini Track Complex when we come back more from the Division Three Outdoor National Track and Field Championships.
last individual sprint race races of the championship. The men's 200 meter dash. The Division Three championship record held by J.P. Moss. No, that's my bad. J.P. setting that record last year over in Geneva, Ohio, 20.55 seconds. Check trail from Ramapo set the facility record earlier this week here in preliminary. That record, 20.71 seconds. Competing today in lane one will be Jackson Price of Emory. Lane two, London Little from Wisconsin Oshkosh. Lane three, he was the runner-up in 2021 in this event from England, Jameer Beasley. Lane four with the fastest qualifying time of 20.71 seconds from Ramapo. Welcome back to the Policini Track and Field Complex in Rochester, New York. It's the 2023 Division Three Outdoor Track and Field Championships hosted by St. John Fisher. On your screen now is one of the marquee events of this national championship. It's the men's 200 meters. They set their blocks and get dialed in, but this field, Stu, is one of the most loaded fields we have ever seen. It was indoors, it is outdoors. Yeah, we'll have... The record holder, Shek Traore, in lane four, going up against the 100-meter record holder of Sam Blaskowski in five, and the former 200-meter record holder, J.P. Vaught, in lane six. Absolutely loaded right there in the middle of the track, but don't count out some of these competitors. Jameer Beasley out of Rowan. He was third indoors and sixth outdoors. Coming in as a 17th seed. And he is in the final today. Ran 2096 earlier this season. I think my seeds are off because I do not think he was the 17th seed. Anyway, Jameer Beasley, don't count him out just yet. Moving all along, we have Christian Campbell who ran in the 100 meter earlier. He ran 1030 wind aided this year, which is 10th on the all conditions list. He's also ran 2080 in this event, which is tied for fourth all time. Blaskowski's tied for fourth all time. Jameer Beasley is 16th all time. And Eliza Jefferson was 20th all time, but did not make this final. So we have a, a loaded field. Jared Storm right there in lane eight was an indoor, was an all American in the 100 here just a few hours ago. So you have the indoor 200 champion. You have the reigning outdoor 200 champion. You have the 100 meter champion all in this final. Looks like JP's wearing an old school center speed suit there. Throwback. In lane one, we'll have Jackson Price of Emory, London Little of Wisconsin Oshkosh, Jameer Beasley of Rowan, Shek Traore of Ramapo, Sam Blaskowski of Wisconsin Lacrosse, JP Vaught from Center, <coughs> Christian Campbell, CMS, and Jared Storm of Mount Union. From a team perspective, lacrosse needs help from Sam Blaskowski. They're down by 24 and a half points. It may be, don't want, to con don't want to guarantee anything just yet, but they need help. JP Vaught, your reigning champion, elected not to run the 100 at these championships, focusing only on the 200 meters. He wanted to be fresh for this event. He knew it was going to take everything he had to repeat as national champion. Shaq Traore holds the D3 record of 2049. The championship record set last year, 2055. Keep your eye on the clock. This field is loaded. Get excited. They should have just a bit of a tailwind as they enter the home stretch. It's been a little bit erratic here today at the Policini Track Complex. But if anything, heading this direction, we've had a bit of a tailwind. They're in their blocks now. And here we are off. Uh, Blaskowski and Triori catch JP Vaught on the turn. Shaq Triori turns for home 
with a slight advantage, but the 100 meter record holder is going to run him down. I don't think so. Shaq Triori is going to run away from this field. Keep an eye on your clock. Shaq Triori, your 200 meter national champion, sets a new D3 record if the win stays legal. And it does, a new D3 record for Shek Traore, 2025, the fastest in history, takes off almost a quarter of a second from his previous record, Shek Traore, as if there was a doubt. Yeah, that was absolutely the Shek Traore show there. He got out to a blazing start, and not even Sam Blaskowski, your 100-meter champion, could run him down in the home stretch. Wow, Shek Traore. Outrunning Sam Blaskowski. Here's the entire race once again. You can see Blaskowski and Shek Traore got out so hard. He catches the 100 meter record holder within 100 meters. Sam looked like he could have caught him, but Shek ran away from the record holder and runs to his third national title in a calendar year. Yeah, just a dominant performance from Shek there. Sam Blaskowski continuing an amazing weekend to finish second there, but when you come out and set a record in the final, there's not going to be anybody else around. Wow, historic race, historic field. We turn our attention now to the middle of the field once again, where we will hand out our awards, All-American awards, excuse me, for the men's triple jump field. Ladies and gentlemen, back down to the podium area. We've got your medalists for the triple jump for the men. John. Here presenting the awards is Chris Bostwick, head coach from Buffalo State. In eighth place with a jump of 14.89 from Birmingham Southern, Maurice Sutherland. In seventh place, with a jump of 15.00 from McMurray, Dontre Senegal. In sixth place, with a jump of 15.17 from Bethany Lutheran, Jake Marzinski. In fifth place, with a jump of 15.24 from Rochester, Cole Goodman. In fourth place, with a jump of 15.28 from Wisconsin Oshkosh, Jonathan Wilburn. In third place with a jump of 15.31 from Virginia Wesleyan, Janai Roberts. In second place with a jump of 15.34 from Wisconsin Whitewater, Shelvin Garrett II. And in first place with a jump of 15.57 from Buffalo State, Shavon Allen. Congratulations to your All-Americans and the men's triple jump, especially Siobhan Allen from Buffalo State, your national champion. Let's take a look at how he did it. His last two jumps, he could have won this event on three different jumps, but here he is in 14.46, setting it up there. It's clean, and then the championship jump, 15.57, will be his winning mark. That's 51.01. Congratulations, Siobhan Allen from Buffalo State, a dominant performance to become your national champion in the men's triple jump. His coach should be comfortable on that podium as he'll be able to hand over another award here in a little bit to Natalia Sawyer, who just won the 400 meter hurdle. Next on the track here in just a few minutes will be the 200 meter for the women. We just saw another D3 record go down. So let's recap so far of what we've seen so far. A 400 meter, four by one, 100 meter relay record, a triple jump national record, both 100 meter records, a 200 meter record, five so far at this championship. Record count stands at 
five. We expected this coming in with the depth of the field here. Over 100 athletes entered in these championships, sit on top 25 all-time lists in their respective event. So no surprise that when you get that amount of talent together, the record books are being rewritten, especially in the sprints. It's been an amazing day. We're in our last individual sprinting event of the day. We just saw Shek Traore win the men's 200 in a new record time, unchallenged the whole race. He looked amazing, but we still have the women's 200, which is another marquee event of these championships. I keep saying that, but it remains true. Women's 200 field is on the backstretch of the Saint, of the Policini, excuse me, track and field complex in Rochester, New York. Before we check in again with them, we're going to go back to the infield real quick for the 400 hurdles women's All-American Award presentation. Fans, let's go back down to the podium. We've got our award winners for the women's 400 meter hurdles. John. I think the award is Chris Bostwick, head coach from Buffalo State. In eighth place with a time of 10407 from SUNY Geneseo, Gwen Shepherdson. In seventh place with a time of 101.34 from Colby Fiona Mexico. In sixth place with a time of one minute. 30.39, University of Chicago, Ren Brown. In fifth place with a time of 100.39 from CMS, Caroline Del Vecchio. In fourth place with a time of 100.29 from TCNJ, Eliza Brunash. In third place with a time of 100.21 from Wisconsin Lacrosse, Emma Lawrence. In second place with a time of 59.17 from Gustavus Adolphus, Bergen Nelson. And in first place with a time of 58.66 from Buffalo State, Natalia Sawyer. Welcome back. Congratulations to your All-Americans in the women's 400-meter hurdles and to your national champion from Buffalo State, Natalia Sawyer. Congratulations to that field. And as we turn our attention back to the track, the women's 200 meters is on the track. We'll run you through lane assignments now and then give you some of the names to watch out for. In lane one, Ava David from Elmhurst. Tina Shelton from Wisconsin Whitewater is in two. Kennedy Waite from Mount Union is in three. Lauren Jarrett of Wisconsin Lacrosse is in four. Jasmine Broadway from Rowan is in five. Ken Benjamin from Bodwin is in six. Adelia Coleman from Bridgewater is in seven. And rounding out the field from North Central is Lindsay Novak in eight. We just saw Kennedy Waite win the 400. We saw her win the indoor 200. We saw Lauren Jarrett finish runner up in that 100. Adelia Coleman, the indoor 60 meter champ. Keon Benjamin from Bowden was fourth in the 200 indoor, seventh in that 60. Ava David was 10th indoor, so she improves upon that. Tina Shelton was the WEAC champ, hoping to take home another All-American award. It's going to be loaded. Adelia was just in that 100 as well. We'll see how Lauren Jarrett holds up and can get more points for her Wisconsin Lacrosse Eagles team. We saw a Division Three record with legal wind in the men's 200. Conditions look to be pretty similar for the women's. Championship record. 23 D3 record 23-29. Official hands it over to the starter and she'll give him the command to enter their blocks. Middle of your screen in white will be Kennedy Waite and Lauren Jarrett in four.
And they're off. Clean start as Lauren Jarrett makes up the stagger, but here comes Kennedy Waite. We're gonna have Lauren Jarrett, Kennedy Waite coming down the home stretch, but don't cut out Keon Benjamin just yet. But Kennedy Waite is flying down this home stretch, making it known that she's the indoor champ. But here comes Lauren Jarrett. Can Lauren Jarrett pass her on the last stretch? No, Kennedy Waite, your 2023 outdoor 200 meter champion. 23.95 for Kennedy Wade of Mountain Union and the wind is legal. Hands on her head, she can't believe it. She just won the 400, coming back with a championship in the 200. What an amazing championship here for Kennedy Wade. Lauren, wow. Lauren Jarrett gave a spirited chase there but ends up finishing second in 24-16. Kennedy Wade looked amazing coming off that turn. That was incredible and shout out to Keon Benjamin. Moving on up, we're gonna show the replay here in a little bit, but I think we're gonna go over to the awards first for the 400 meter hurdles. 0.4 from Amherst, Ellis Phillips Gallucci. In seventh place with a time of 53.35 from Rowan Marquise Young. In sixth place with a time of 53.24 from Middlebury Peter Hansen. In fifth place with a time of 52.36 from Westminster, Jake Patton. In fourth place with a time of 52.16 from Trine, Jake Gladio. In third place with a time of 51.14 from UMass Dartmouth, Cam Rogers. In second place with a time of 50.88 from Bethel, Joel Smith. And in first place, with a time of 50.63 from SUNY Geneseo, Lance Jensen. Congratulations to your All-Americans in the men's 400 meter hurdles and your national champion, Lance Jensen of SUNY Geneseo, who takes it home in 50.63. But for now, we're gonna show you a replay of that women's 200. Kennedy Waite is back on the track for the millionth time this weekend, and she is out hard in lane three. She comes around the turn with a clear lead, and she would not relinquish it. It's Lauren Jarrett from Wisconsin Lacrosse giving chase, but she would have to settle for second as Kennedy Waite claims her second national championship of the weekend. Woo. Three titles for Kennedy Waite this calendar year. Indoor two, outdoor two, outdoor four. A great double, a 2-4 double. And she gets a chair. She was graciously handed a chair. She'll take a second to relax. Well, she's got the 4x4 four 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 later on. We'll, uh, we'll give you a quick rundown of where things stand from the points situation before these men's 5Ks come up. Right now, we'll take you to the men's with two events left. We have the 5K and just the 4x4. Four four. MIT, 60 and a half points. Wisconsin Lacrosse, 44 points. Wisconsin Eau Claire, 37 points. And Rowan has 23. Rowan will have a four by four. And Ann Will, John Carroll. But Rowan does not have anyone in that 5K. And Alex Phillip is coming there soon in that 5K. MIT has a few folks in that 5K. Wisconsin Lacrosse will need Ethan Gregg to do some work, but it is an intense battle here. Wisconsin Whitewater has two in the 5K. They're at 24 points in sixth. Now we'll take you over to the women's score. Wisconsin Lacrosse has pulled away after Lauren Jarrett was runner-up in the 200. They have 62 and a half points. Wash U has 47. Loris has 38, and MIT with 34, U Chicago with 29, and they have a handful of runners in the women's 5K later on. So there's going to be a lot of movement in the top four to get those trophies. Now we've got the 5K on deck, and it's going to be an absolutely loaded field, Noah. Absolutely. We've got a few minutes here until they'll take to the line. 
We're going to step away from the Policini track and field complex here for just a minute or two, and we'll be right back to introduce a star-studded men's 5K field. Welcome back to Rochester, New York. It's the 2023 Division III Outdoor Track and Field Championships hosted by St. John Fisher University. On the track now is the men's 5,000 meter run. There's a lot of storylines in this race. Before we get into it, why don't we just run you down the list of 22 entrants and then we'll tell you who to look out for. Ethan Gregg, Wisconsin Lacrosse, James Settles, Colorado College, Max Sventi, North Central, Simon Hayes from Wilmington, Connor Riss, also from North Central, Ryan Cradell, Haverford, Jack Rosencrantz, Pomona Pitzer, Corey Kennedy, RPI, Christian Patska, your steeplechase champion from Wisconsin Whitewater, and 10, Elias Lindgren of Williams, and 11, Ma of MIT, Logan Bokovich from St. Olaf, Alex Phillip, your 10K champion from John Carroll, Gunnar Schlender from Whitewater is in there, Matt Leckie from RPI, Henry Pick from CMS, Nick Andrews from Geneseo, Lucas Florsheim from Promota Pitzer, Christopher Collette, second in the steeplechase from Wartburg, Braden Nicholson from North Central, North Central with a strong contingent, Spencer Moon from Simpson, and Frank Sorba from Lynchburg. Stu, 22 athletes in here, and there's a good handful who could win it. Yeah, this is the deepest and hardest field to make in D3 history. Number 22 on the list was 14-12. And who you know who that was? Who? It was Nick Andrews. He was sixth in cross country, fifth in the indoor 3K, and anchored Geneseo to a DMR victory. And he almost didn't make this national meet. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, going into this race, we have six athletes who have run under 14 minutes for the 5K. That's virtually unheard of in Division Three. Usually one or two athletes a year will go under 14. Six have done, throw, done so this year, and as Stu mentioned, Nick Andrews, 14-12 was the final time to make this meet. At one point, we tweeted out that, th that only 15 men in D3 history have ever gone under 14.05, and at that point... 1404 was 10th in the nation of this current year. So an absolutely loaded field. If you joined us on Thursday, we saw a 10K under the lights, and it played out as a heavyweight battle between Alex Phillip and Ethan Gregg. Alex Phillip getting the better of Gregg over the last six laps to become your 10K national champion, but that was a hard race. It took a lot out of the field. And Stu, I'm going to spoil this for you. I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen in this 5K. Ethan Gregg is going to go to the front and drill it. Yes, he will. We actually talked with Gunnar Schlender yesterday as he was watching his teammate Gracie Holland asked him how he felt after that 10K. He said, surprisingly well. I said, what do you think is going to happen tomorrow? He goes, oh, I already talked to Ethan. He's going to take it out. Yeah, not only do we know what's going on, but Ethan is telling his competitors exactly what the game plan is. There is no mystery here. So the big question is, how will they respond to the strategy? I spoke with Elias Lindgren, who's one of those sub-14-minute competitors. And it seems like the field has an attitude of, you know what? We've got nothing to lose. Let's see what happens. Six guys in here are fresh. James Settles of Colorado College. Connor Riss of North Central. Corey Kennedy of RPI. What? No! It looks what? like, if you look at your screen right now, no! we're, see we're seeing a red card from the official. Unreal! Number one. It's Ethan Gregg. Ethan Gregg has been disqualified from this men's 5,000. Sir, you cannot do that at the national meet. The right it's a 5K. The crowd has just broken out into boos in this race. Unbelievable. If, if you look at one there, Ethan Gregg from lacrosse, he steps up, his foot's on the line, and he quivers just a little bit. They're disqualifying Ethan Gregg for a false start in a 5K. He's... He's sitting in the infield, and the race has begun without him. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. A referee. Yeah, it's a, deep, it's a false start. It's a 5,000-meter race. What a shame. One step is not going to matter in 14 minutes. Shame on the officials for disqualifying Ethan Gregg, but we turn our attention now to the race as it has 
begun, and the book is wide open now. The, wow. The, anything can happen in this race. Unbelievable. E there's, a, there's a shot of Ethan Gregg on the infield. He doesn't know what happened. Just a disqualification. Well, okay, we owe it to the athletes who are competing now to focus on them, but heart goes out to Ethan Gregg. Yeah, and as you mentioned, number 22 on the list, Nick Andrews, 14-12. He is currently in the lead now with, looks like, Christopher Collette, your steeplechase runner-up moving to the front here with Spencer Moon from Simpson on the side of him. We've got two North Central guys there as well. We'll see how team tactics play into this. You wonder what is going on in the field, the, the minds of the field right now because they all had their race plan sorted out. They knew they were going to chase Ethan Gregg. So we'll see if somebody else wants to come and, and make this pace hot. It looks and like that's comes, happening. Yeah, he, as you said, it, Spencer Moon going to the front. He's had some incredible times so far this season. He has yet to be a track All-American despite some of his historic times. He was 10th in cross country, and now he's going to push the field. Spencer Moon taking it out hard. Christopher Collette giving chase there in second. We saw him in the steeple earlier. He's seating about five meters to the number one spot. Wow, Spencer Moon going for it here. Christopher Collette in no man's land now. Now we kind of have the similar situation, but a different player up front. Yeah, it's Spencer Moon almost caught the field by surprise because this is what they expected to be doing, but they didn't expect it to be him doing it, and it happened maybe a lap or two later than they expected. Yeah, roughly 2.15 through the first 800, so taking a page out of Ethan Gregg's book, pushing the pace, making it honest, and I, I feel like the field is a little discombobulated, just like the rest of the people here after seeing a DQ in the 5K. They're kind of getting their bearings straight figuring out what's going to happen as, as Alex Phillip leads the chase pack, but Spencer Moon continues to lead from the start. We'll take you through some of his credentials. He, w he ran 14.04. He was 10th in cross country. He's got a, actually a great resume. He's unhailed in terms of his All-American performances on the track, but he's got 4.08 mile speed, 14.04 5K speed, ran 29.27 in the 10K. Finished 15th on Thursday, so he's ready to compete. Yeah, but the field doesn't seem to be taking this move super seriously. In the 10K, when Greg went, you saw Alex Phillip just just close it down immediately and sit in the pocket. Now Alex Phillip is in second place, maybe trying to close this gap a little bit, but they're pretty comfortable giving Spencer Moon 40 meters at this point. Yeah, it is. the lead is growing, but who knows how long Alex Phillip will let that lead go for it. You know, it's an interesting strategy here. You've got to run away from the field. There are tired legs. He has tired legs. So we'll see how he can handle this early pace by himself. That last lap from Spencer Moon was a 64. We'll get a read on this one as he comes through. The gap is extending just a little bit. Spencer Moon comes through. Let's see what that split is. It'll give us a better idea of how the race is playing out. 65 mid for that as the pack comes in, being led by Alex Phillip. We'll see what they're running. They came through in a 66-8, so they're seeding about a second per lap to Spencer Moon right now. Yeah, you have Alex Phillip, then Braden Nicholson, Corey Kennedy, Lucas Florsheim, Christopher Collette, and one more athlete, looks like Frank Sorba in there as well, and Connor Riss and Elias Alingren joins that crew as well. But Spencer Moon taking it to the field right now, he has credentials to keep this up. We have roughly under 10 minutes of racing left. Who knows how long Alex Phillip will let this go. Yeah, it's early days in this men's 5K, but Spencer Moon has shown his cards, and so he might as well keep going for it. I'm interested to see what these splits are because the gap seems to have stabilized a little bit here. Alex Phillip, who has changed uniforms for John Carroll now. He's rocking his 5K uniform, shakes out the arms again. Spencer Moon comes across the line. That split was a 66-7, and so now he's essentially running the same pace as the chase pack. It's impressive to see here, and I'm wondering, I'm curious what Alex Phillip and Braden Nicholson will do. Alex Phillip is kind of doing what Ethan Gregg did la last on Thursday for him, kind of leading this charge. Braden Nicholson is fresh from North Central. He did run a great 1500 leading up to this to get ready for the 5K. Did have a qualifier in the 10 as well, but opting to go fresh here in this 5K. 
Yeah, Alex Phillip is not getting a free ride here. If someone's going to close down this gap, it's probably going to fall to him. We'll see if Brendan Nicholson is willing to come around and help at all. But Elias Lindgren now leading that big group. We'll see if he can eat into this pace as well. I know he was up for the pace. He wanted to just go for broke in this men's 5K. It's his last race in a Williams uniform. If I'm Brian Nicholson, I am content sitting on Alex Phillip right now and letting him work. He knows he has tired legs. Use your fresh legs to your advantage. Let someone else do the work as Elias Lindgren, Frank Sorba, Lucas Florsheim, Connor Riss, Ryan Cordell, Corey Kennedy, Max Aventi, C Christopher Collette, and James Settles all in that next group behind them. It's a big group. Only five of them will be All-Americans. Continuing to pull just about a second per lap. Spencer Moon, one second out from Alex Phillip over that last lap. See, it's nice to see the candy stripe uniforms out here in North Central with three athletes in this 5K. Yeah, speaking of Max Aventi ahead of time before the race, you know, they had some struggles over the COVID time. A lot of people weren't really running together, separated, but now they're back recharged and ready to make North Central back on the map. As it's you see, three of them up front. Historic program. We'll see what the three of them can do to revitalize things out in Illinois. Spencer Moon rounds the turn into the home stretch. Spencer Moon, I'm loving this. Never a track All-American, 10th in cross country this year. And now he's going for broke. And he looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. He looks pretty good right now. We'll get another lap split here. Alex Phillip has now kind of drifted in the outside of lane one, almost into lane two. I think he wants Braden to come around and take the pace over. Elias has closed down the gap. I'm curious if Elias will just go around. That was the 70 for Spencer Moon, so he slowed down a little bit. 69 there for Alex Phillip. Yeah, Alex took a, took a look to his left to kind of say, like, Braden, how about you take this for me? But Braden continues to sit in third, Elias Lindgren, Frank Sorba, round out four and five, and a big pack for six, seven, and eight, so as that, Spencer Moon continues to lead. That was the first lap that the pack, that the chase actually gained some time back on Spencer Moon, so this is a critical time now. The lead isn't stretching right now, they're starting to claw some time back, and so how long can he keep them at bay? And that's gonna be an interesting test for Spencer Moon if they catch him if they catch him you got to figure out you know do you go with them or do you hang back a little bit re-catch your breath you can't just let them pass you and then not go with it at all you got to stay strong when they come onto your shoulder we saw spencer moon of simpson shake out his arms a little bit to my eye it looks like the gap is coming down a little bit but alex phillip the champion will have to do it himself he's getting absolutely no help from Nichols or Lindgren right now. I love it. Don't help him out. You got to make the guy hurt. He's already hurting. Why do a little bit more work as you're already catching on Spencer Moon? They're going to catch him by the back turn here. The gap's coming down fast. That was the 72 second last lap for Spencer Moon. Alex Phillip took them through in 69. So they're gaining three or four seconds a lap right now. And so the the gap is big on your screen, but it's going to come down within the next 600 meters or so. We should have a new leader of this race. Yeah, I mean, a gutsy performance for Spencer Moon. It's not over for him yet. This is the big test now. You have to stay with them as they come with you. There's going to be an urge from Alex Hill to go around him. You probably don't want to keep Spencer Moon with you, given what he just did. But, yeah, closing down here. Kudos to Spencer Moon making this a race, keeping things honest early on as they went through 3K at 828. So we'll see how he can handle this. As the dynamics of this race change here over the next lap, we look to this chase back where Max Sventi, the sub-14 man from North Central College, is now taking up pacing duties for them. And he's not far off, but he'll have to keep the pressure up if he wants to close down the gap to Elias Lindgren. There's a chance that this whole race comes back together. Spencer Moon is now caught by Alex Phillip. And Alex Phillip can decide to sit or go, and he's going to keep going. They have a mile left. So Alex Phillip continues to press here, moving with Braden Nicholson and Elias Lindgren. Spencer Moon tries to attach, but it looks like their speed can't be matched in Max Aventi, Connor Riss now working together. They're realizing that North Central can do something pretty big here. They'll have three in the top six right now. Can they get three in the top five if they can pass Spencer Moon? Yeah, they'll have three in the top five very soon now. Max Aventi is starting to really stretch that chase pack 
Alex Phillip is going to get no help from Nichols or Lindgren here. But as they round the turn, they're going to see three laps to go, and something is going to happen. Alex Phillip has to be tired. He has to be tired after that 10K two nights ago. He's paying homage to Ethan Gregg for Ethan Gregg doing the same exact thing in the 10K, and now he's going to do it here. But watch for James Settles here. He's just moving into fifth from Colorado College. He's about to pass Spencer Moon into fourth. Training up at altitude, ran 14.08 at the Oxy Invitational, was 60th in cross country, and this is his first D3 track and field championships. He's a new runner on the national stage, and he's currently in fourth place, leading the North Central folks to the lead pack. Just to give you an idea, they're moving at about the same pace that they were in the 10K. That just gives you an idea of what, you know, slightly warmer conditions, but also just really tired legs can do for the field and gives you a greater appreciation for that 10K. Alex Phillip continues to push from the front. Nichols sitting in his hip pocket and Lindgren is that leading trio. But James Settles from Colorado College made a big move on the last lap to move up into fourth. Max Aventi, who was doing a lot of those chasing duties, is in fifth. Yeah, you like to see James Settles getting after it here. He has fresh legs. They got in on Thursday or Friday when we talked to their coaches as Ryan Cradell now of Hereford has passed James, uh, Spencer Moon to move into seventh. So we have a pack of five. We got Ryan Cradell, Corey Kennedy, Andrew Mott, Lucas Florsheim, and Christopher Collette for the final two All-American positions as Alex Phillip is taking the lead here with two laps to go. We are under two to go here as that leading trio on your screen moves down the back stretch. Elias looks like he wants to maybe move into second. Elias has had some difficulties over the last lap of these championship races as his legs kind of start to lock up, but you know he's going for broke here in his last chance at a championship for Williams. But Alex Phillip, just a cool customer. He's out there. He doesn't look too concerned yet. Yeah, he's handling this well. He's I in the competition, seeing where things are. He's proven why he's won six national titles. He twisted his ankle last year in the 10K, but still finished eighth last year in the 5K. So he's looking to add one more national title to his resume, but he has competition now. Braden Nicholson of North Central, Elias Lindgren of Williams with one lap to go. They're gonna have to go at the king here as they hear the bell. Alex Phillip, as Ethan Gregg watches from the infield, Alex Phillip will push from the front. Elias Lindgren now moves into second, but Nichols is going too. They've got a meter of separation. Let's see what Elias has. They're kicking now, 300 meters to go. Elias Lindgren will now slingshot into first. He's had difficulty kicking this year, but he's showing his hand. Alex Phillip will not give up the inside. It's a race to the turn. This is a reminder of the 2021 cross country final when these two duked it out all cross country season over AK. They're gonna have some lap runners to deal with here. It's Alex Phillip, it's Elias Lindgren coming down the last 150 meters. Does Elias have it? Alex Phillip gets a meter or two in the last 100. He starts to pull away, but Elias is still looking strong. But all hail Alex Phillip from John Carroll, your 10K champion, six-time champion. He's going to hold up seven fingers now. It's his seventh national championship. Congratulations, Alex Phillip. Elias Lindgren in second. Nichols in third. That trio remains intact. Yeah, Braden Nicholson, what a race. What a race for James Settles as we now have the final All-American spot sorted out. A massive finish. Oh! Wow. That was insane. What a race from two legendary D3 runners, Elias Linger and Alex Phillip duking it out, 14.07. What a shot of them right there. The mutual respect these guys have, making it honest, making it a race, not getting nervous when Spencer Moon went to the front. What an amazing re race we were just treated to. We'll talk more about it, but now we turn our attention to the infield where the All-American Awards in the 200-meter dash are being awarded.
Winners for the men's 200 meter dash. John. Presenting the award is Akeem Brown, assistant coach from Ramapo. In eighth place with a time of 21.66 from Emory Jackson Price. In seventh place with a time of 21.52 from Wisconsin Oshkosh, London Little. In sixth place with a time of 21.33 from Mount Union, Jared Storm. In fifth place with a time of 21.06, Jameer Beasley. In fourth place with a time of 21.05 from CMS, Christian Campbell. In third place with a time of 21.01 from center, J.P. Vaught. In second place with a time of 20.67 from Wisconsin Lacrosse, Sam Blaskowski. And in first place with a time of 20.25 from Ramapo, Chegna Triore. Congratulations to those All-Americans in the men's 200-meter dash and Czech Traore, who becomes your national champion and D3 record holder in the men's 200. We're recovering up here from what was a lively 5,000 meters, and it got off to a crazy start or false start, as I should say, as Ethan Gregg there in lane one, your runner-up in the 10K, false started, which is rare in a distance event, but it does happen. He was given a red card and disqualified. We go now to the last lap where Elias Lindgren of Williams challenges six time at the time, national championship Alex Phillip down the home stretch. These two had been trading blows all race. Alex Phillip had been leading. They come around some laughed runners here and add 100 to go. Elias Lindgren tries one more time, but he cannot unseat the champion. Alex Phillip, a seven-time national champion in Division Three from John Carroll. This weekend took a lot out of him as he collapsed to the track. Congratulations to Alex Phillip. I know we'll miss calling his races, Stu. Yeah, what a legendary D3 runner. Seven national championships. High five in our photographers. Just an unreal career. We talked to him after he won his first title in 2021 the Cross Country National Championship, and he told us that he wants to be remembered as one of the best D3 runners in history. We'll pause that thought and give you more perspective on that, but we're gonna turn things over now back to the stadium to introduce the 200 meter champion in the women's 200. Hip number 10, Abigail Loisel from Pomona Pitzer, Abigail. Wearing hip 10. <laughs> hip number 11 is Aubrey Fisher of Wartburg. Before I go on, let me go down to the 200 meter dash for women awards. And John. I think the awards is Sabrina Stocker, assistant coach from Mount Union. In eighth place with a time of 24.61 from North Central, Lindsay Novak. In seventh place with a time of 24.41 from Wisconsin Whitewater, Tina Shelton. In sixth place with a time of 24.39 from Elmhurst, Ava David. In fifth place with a time of 24.33 from Rowan, Jasmine Broadway. In fourth place with a time of 24.24 from Bridgewater, Adalia Coleman. In third place with a time of 24.22 Kian Benjamin from Bowdoin. In second place with a time of 24.16 from Wisconsin Lacrosse, Lauren Jarrett. And in first place with a time of 23.95 from Mount Union, Kennedy Wyatt.
Kennedy Waite, your 200 meter champion right there in the middle of your screen. She hoists that trophy over her head. Congratulations to her and Lauren Jarrett, Ken Benjamin, finishing second and third in all of your eight All-Americans in the women's 200 meter dash. Back on the track, we are doing the distance races. We just saw a historic men's 5K where Alex Phillip claimed his seventh individual national championship. All kinds of drama in that race. But now it's the women heading to the far side of the track to take their marks for the women's 5,000 meter run. I'll try to temper my emotions right now as Hashtag bad for the sport, DQ'd in the 5K here, but we get things rolling with the women's 5K, and it's just as historic as the men's 5K. Cassie Parker, your D3 record holder, coming in with the number one seed after a incredible, historic women's 10K. We mentioned the men's. It was the fastest ever to be an eighth-place All-American. It was the fastest ever for the women's to be a 10th, eighth-place All-American, and a lot of them will be back Cassie Parker and Fiona Smith had a duel out here for 25 laps, and we expect the same for 12 and a half. Also in the race from a historical standpoint, Annika Urban, 1606, fifth all-time. She just won the 1500 meter. You see there on your screen there. Anna Tucker, 1610, eighth all-time, and Clara Mayfield, 21st all-time, earning 1628. Those, uh, those are some athletes to watch out for. Let's go ahead and run you through the full field of 22 before we get into even more storylines in this race. Evelyn Battleson Gunkel from University of Chicago, Caroline McMartin of Central College, Morgan Lee, RPI, Anna Kinger Zeisler, U of Chicago, Clara Mayfield of Carleton, Cassie Parker from Loris, Maddie Hannon, Wisconsin Lacrosse, Jillian Richardson from Bates, Katrina Buramak from University of Chicago, Abigail Wazell from Pomona Pitzer, Aubrey Fisher from Wartburg, Anastasia Tucker from Hope, Kirsi Ragup, <coughs> Raja Gopal from MIT, Grace Hadley from WPI, Fiona Smith, St. Benedict, Penelope Green, SUNY Geneseo, Annika Urban from Emory, Lexi Brown from Wartburg, Maddie Kelly, University of Chicago, Sarah Stevenson from Johns Hopkins, Kate Sanderson, MIT, and Emily Conkus from WashU. That's your full field of 22. And if some of those names sound familiar, we're going to see a lot of people doubling back. Even today, we saw Aubrey Fisher win a, a steeple title, Conkus in the 1500, Sarah Stevenson in the steeple. You know, we have a handful of athletes that are fresh. We saw Mandy Hannon runner up in the 800. Some fresh athletes to keep an eye on for. Morgan Lee of RPI. Jillian Richardson of Bates. Kersey Roger Pohl of MIT. Grace Hadley, WPI. Penelope Green of Sweden Geneseo. And they're off here in the women's 5K. It's a fair start. <laughs> Morgan Lee. Morgan Lee from RPI, as I mentioned, she has fresh legs. Goes straight to the front. Smart, smart racing. If you're feeling good, confident with your training, you take it to these women who have been running this weekend when you are fresh. Annika Urban also looks like she wants to be in the thick of it, so she tucks into second. And then a familiar face, Fiona Smith, is there in third. Do we see Where's, Cassie Parker? I do not see Cassie Parker. Cassie Parker is not. Well, she probably has a different single. She's probably not wearing white. There she here, is. Here, here, purple. purple. Okay, Cassie she Parker just, yeah. is in the field. She's in the middle there False in purple. False alarm. She probably heard us, and now she's moving up to the front. Yeah, Cassie Parker moving up, your 10K champion, moving up the field quickly. I was just surprised not to see her in the lead. Yeah, I mean, also, these athletes changing uniforms on us, I get it, but I was expecting to see a white singlet, and as she could hear us, she goes to the front. All right, Cassie Parker's in the race, by the way. Yeah, thanks, Cassie, for not <laughs> keeping us guessing any longer. She has resumed her rightful position at the front of this field, and she starts to turn the screws a little bit. And what do you know, Stu? Fiona Smith sitting in right behind her. Yeah, Fiona Smith in second, and Annika Urban, your 1,500-meter champ, into third. They are three of the all-time greats in the 5K based on their performances earlier this year. As mentioned, Fiona Smith is fourth. Annika Urban is fifth, and obviously Parker holds that D3 record. A lot right. of 
tired legs in this leading trio. We saw Annika Smith earlier, obviously, in the 1500. Cassie Parker and Fiona Smith had an epic duel in the 10K two nights ago that came down to a 400-meter sprint at the end. Annika Smith there, you mean Annika Urban. I mean Annika Urban. Combining two great runners into one force as they go after Cassie Parker now. Fiona Smith, obviously there in the middle there, rode along for that 10K until making a challenge over the last lap. Annika Urban slated there in third. She's obviously got a kick, so if she can hang around for a while, could be interesting. It's pretty similar makeup to the 10K right now. You have Cassie Parker, Fiona Smith, now they're joined by Annika Urban. You have Anna Tucker and Clara Mayfield. And now Morgan Lee of RPI is kind of in the middle and the rest of the field all together. Tucker also ran a really hard 10K on Thursday. Faded a little bit in the latter stages, but was looking really strong. And so if she's, if she's recovered at all, she could be a factor in this race. Yeah, it's impressive to win your 1500 and then come back in the 5K. It's such a tough 15-5 double you don't get that much time to recover and now she's putting herself in it and this pack yeah this main pack for the last three all-american spots led by morgan lee of rpi and grace hadley of wpi two fresh legs here battling to become all-americans cassie parker taking them through in 75 76 the last two laps urban beginning to fall off the back of that just just by a tad just by about a meter but it could be a sign that she's not feeling really good right now to get ahead of ourselves here the obviously as we mentioned cassie parker d3 record holder 1537 d3 championship record 1551 75 second pace is roughly 1537 in that sub 1540 range depending on the tenths there so we are Looking fairly pretty good here yeah, through 1,000 meters. 311 of, through 1K. A little bit of a slow start in that first 300, but they could definitely make up for that in the back half. Annika Urban kind of continuing to drift back from that duo, and now what we're seeing is a very familiar sight. Cassie Parker from Loris, Fiona Smith from St. Benedict, just as they did over 25 laps on Thursday. They start the duel in the sun. Much respect to all of these athletes throughout the entire races. You know, a lot of times we talk about tactics and championship racing, who has the best kick. We really haven't seen a lot of tactics involved. Yeah, there's been some maybe slower paces, but not your crazy slow and then a massive kick. They've been going from the gun, and especially in these distance races, we're seeing it here right now too. And we're seeing a lot of mental toughness because it's one thing to know what's going to happen, and it's another thing to show up for it. And so Fiona Smith and Cassie Parker, I mean, they did this already, and here they are again. It's like... Cassie Parker got the better of her on Thursday, but Fiona Smith, it's a new day. Anything can happen. It was almost as if when Cassie Parker went to the front, Fiona Smith was like, all right, race on, here we go. Like, she was content to sit if it was going to go slow, but now she knows her main competition is Cassie Parker. Anna Tucker is going to close down slowly on Annika Urban there in the third position, and that's Mayfield in fifth. So we have little gaps all over the field, really, and then a large pack behind Mayfield. It's smart that backpack for the final three are kind of all staying together. You know, we mentioned it's hot out. You don't want to get caught alone like Annika, Anna Tucker, and Claire Mayfield are doing. I mean, they've done this in the 10K. They probably have strategies involved, but a little safer to stay with the pack as they come through with eight laps remaining. We'll get a split on that for you. That was a 78, so slowing just slightly. Probably Record probably not in the cards unless we see a really hard close. But still, we're being treated to a, just another heavyweight battle at these championships between Parker and Smith. Urban has now been caught by Tucker. We'll see if Tucker goes around or wants to just tuck in for a lap or two. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> From a team perspective, UChicago has three in this race. They're currently... Down to MIT by five points. So they need to have some work because they also do not have a 4x4, four four and MIT does. So these women in the 5K got to get some points to make things close. They have some work to do to get to the top five, but they could round out six, seven, eight. 
which only leaves them with a point advantage to MIT heading into that 4x4, four four, if that happens. Nothing changing up front here. Cassie Parker continues to drive this race forward. Fiona Smith is sitting just behind her, unwilling to take the lead at this point. Tucker now moves into third as Annika Urban drops back into fourth. Mayfield is now targeting Urban. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what happens, you know, to Cassie and Fiona. Does one fall off this pace? Can Anna Tucker make up that gap at all? Because she looks pretty strong moving up. Kind of, we saw this similar in the 10K as a big pack comes down with seven laps remaining for them with the chase pack for the final All-American spots. You have Grace Hadley of WPI, Morgan Lee of RPI, and it looks like Jillian Richardson of Bates, the yeah. final six seven eight six seven eight totally up for grabs right now mayfield moves up into this field we've got a change there she moves into fourth urban hanging tough in fifth tucker continues to gap those two by 10 or so meters but definitely not eating into the lead of cassie parker yeah fiona and cassie just showing absolute guts this weekend the number one and number two all-time runners in the 10K went after each other on Thursday. Fiona ran a PR. No one would blame her if she stuck around in the backpack, but she is going after it. But here comes Anna Tucker kind of creeping up. Yeah, Tucker is definitely not losing ground. I just can't quite tell if she's gaining ground. So we'll, we'll get a split here, and we can kind of compare them. But she's at least pulling pretty even. Cassie has slowed somewhat. That was an 81-second lap out of her. And Tucker has pulled back two seconds over just that lap. Tucker got two seconds back. And so we'll see if that momentum propels her forward. Wow. Yeah, and that kind of gives you some confidence. As you're running and you're feeling good and you see them coming back to you, that means you're doing something right and got to feel optimistic that you can catch them. We settled this under the lights on Thursday. We're going to settle it again in the sun on Saturday. Cassie Parker, Fiona Smith, but a threat is brewing behind them. In third, Anna Tucker from Hope is clawing back a second or two per lap right now. If, she's, if she continues this, she'll be within striking distance soon. Clara Mayfield back and forth, starting to pull away a little bit from Annika Urban in fifth. Yeah, really impressed with Annika right now, hanging tough after winning that 1,500 in fifth place. You know, in that massive pack, there's still basically the entire field is still in contention to have a chance at an All-American spot. Grace Hadley of WPI still leading. It looks like Anna Kenick Zeisler of Chicago, who is fifth in that 10K, moved up. And Lexi Brown of Wartburg, we haven't mentioned yet, has now moved into eighth. There's a slight, slight separation as they come down this home stretch. There's a great view of them right now. Grace Hadley, WPI, Anna Kenick Zeisler of Chicago. As we say her name, she goes around to move into sixth. She knows the team implications. Lexi Brown going right with her as they'll have five laps remaining. So 2,000 meters to go for the final three All-American spots. Over that last lap, Tucker ran an 80, but so did Cassie Parker. So she's not gaining again right now. We'll see if she can resume the chase. But in my opinion, which has been known to be wrong many times, Cassie Parker and Fiona Smith are fighting for this national championship. Yeah, and they are looking good doing it. You know, no one doesn't look like they're straining too bad right now. You can see kind of content on their faces. Probably similar of what we said on Thursday. They're kind of having their own race right now, not paying attention to each other, just focusing in on their breathing, focusing on how, on how they're feeling. Fiona Smith did this indoors, but didn't have anyone to look at, and now she has Cassie Parker to look at. And we've seen Cassie Parker handle all comers. She's had this same type of battle with Ari Marks in years past, but now it's Fiona Smith, the latest challenger. Anna Tucker there completing this lap. Let's see what Cassie comes through. As you find the lap, Anna Kenick Zeisler, Lexi Brown, and Grace Hadley of WPI have moved, have separated themselves into the final All-American positions. Tucker now losing time on the leading duo. So we have a lot of mini races right now as Abigail Louise and Jillian Richardson of Bates and Pomona Pitzer lead the chase pack to that final All-American position. But we see Cassie and we see Fiona Smith now 
stride for stride. They'll have 1,400 meters to go. 12 minutes into this 5K, Cassie Parker forges ahead in the 5,000. You're 10,000 meter champion. She looks to get the double-double once again this weekend. Fiona Smith, Stu, I think we might see it come down to the last 400 once again. As they turn this corner, they'll see three to go. Yeah, I wonder how what Fiona Smith said to her coach, you know, do you go earlier this time? Do you wind it up? They'll have three laps remaining. My guess is they just said, let's try it again. Yeah, do you wait? Do you go earlier? Do you throw a surge in? It is going to be a battle here for 1,200 meters. Another great duel between these two. Tucker still looking strong in third. She slowed slightly over the duo, but she is still running and keeping pace with Clara Mayfield from Carlton back and forth. So, so Mayfield is not getting into that gap much. Annika Urban there still in fifth. She was out hard early. We'll see if this pack of three behind her can catch back up. Yeah, Fiona Smith still trailing her as Kenick Zeisler leads Grace Hadley and Lexi Brown. They'll have three laps to go. But Cassie Parker, Fiona Smith, 1,000 meters remain. It will be Cassie's seventh national title if she wins. It'll be Fiona Smith's third national title if she wins. So a battle of the juggernauts in D3 running right now. Yeah, every step that goes by, we get a little bit closer to a 400-meter sprint. They enter the home stretch once again. They'll see two to go on the lap counter. They'll see two to go on the lap counter. Up ahead of them is Aubrey Fisher, and so we're going to start getting into some lap runners over the next lap probably. So far this calendar year, Cassie has a title in the cross country and in the 10K. Fiona Smith has the indoor 3K and 5K. So a best of five series comes down to the 5K outdoors. That was a 79 second lap from Cassie Parker and Fiona Smith. An 81 second lap for Anna Tucker. When will Fiona Smith make her move? Could it be now? How is Cassie Parker feeling? She's been in this situation before just two days prior. It's playing out exactly the way we saw on Thursday. They'll try it again. It looks like Fiona Smith is going to roll the dice again. We hit 600 to go. Pretty soon they'll be entering the home stretch for the penultimate time, and we'll see one lap sprint to see what these women have left. Cassie Parker, Fiona Smith battling right now as they... You can tell how tough it is a double as Aubrey Fisher was your steeple champ. Cassie Parker, Fiona Smith, one lap to go. Some grimaces on the face of Cassie Parker, but that's to be expected at this point. We just passed 15 minutes on the clock, and Cassie Parker will take the bell. One lap sprint. Here we go. She looks to have made a slight pace injection, but Fiona Smith is matching. You can kind of see how quick they are moving. The turnover has picked up a bit. The arm carriage is moving a little quicker as Fiona Smith is trying to go to the outside, but it looks like Cassie Parker is holding her off. You can tell Fiona Smith is trying to make a move, but Cassie is matching it and making it a lot harder for Fiona Smith to catch her. Fiona Smith will not go away. She loses a meter or two, but it's not over. Her stride is still looking strong, but Cassie Parker is going for glory, looking to put an exclamation mark on her Division III career. Cassie Parker started for, as a transfer from Iowa as a club runner, won the 2019 10K National Championship, has the outdoor 5K record, has the outdoor 10K record, now adds another title to her historic career, her second win over the weekend, her seventh career national title. Cassie Parker, your 2023 5K national champion. Fiona Smith crossing the line in second for the second time, and Anna Tucker now approaches the finish line. If we can get the camera back to the finish line, Anna Tucker will finish third where she's been this entire race, Clara Mayfield from Carlton, Carlton is charging down for a fourth place finish. And Anna Tucker, excuse me, Annika Urban 
will finish fifth. And here comes Grace Hadley for sixth, Lexi Brown and Anna Kennex Zeisler fighting for seventh. It looks like it's gonna be Anna Kennex Zeisler at the end there for seventh place. Wow, what a race, what a battle between Cassie Parker and Fiona Smith, her seventh national title. Grace Halley there in All-American had a great outdoor season, but Cassie Parker makes it number seven. We're seeing some of our all-time great athletes for the last time here on Championship Saturday. What an honor it's been to call many of their races, many of their championships. I know we'll miss them going forward, but we're also looking forward to seeing the next batch of stars emerge in Division Three distance running. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to call Alex Phillips' races, Cassie Parker's races, and be a part of this history right now, this resurgence in D3 running a huge 10 points. As we get close to wrapping up the 2023 national championships as we get the final finisher here across the line for the women's 5k we'll slowly move on over to the podium and we will crown alex phillip champion once again this weekend awards for the men's 5,000 meter run john presenting the award is Jordan Doerr, assistant coach from John Carroll. In eighth place, with a time of 14.22.69 from North Central, Connor Riss. In seventh place, with a time of 14.22.66 from Lynchburg, Frank Sorba. In sixth place, with a time of 14.22.64 from RPI, Corey Kennedy. In fifth place with a time of 14, 19.77 from North Central, Max Fianti. In fourth place with a time of 14, 12.53 from Colorado College, James Settles. In third place with a time of 14, 11.86 from North Central, Braden Nicholson. In second place with a time of 14, 09.14 from Williams, Elias Lindgren. And in first place with a time of 14.07.39 from John Carroll, Alex Phillip. Men's team scores going into the final event with 18 points. This is the top 10 for 18 points. Widener with 18 points. Aramapo with 18 points. Wartburg has 20 points. Wilmington of Ohio, 21 points. Williams and Wisconsin Whitewater each have 24 points. Rowan has 33 points. John Carroll, 35 points. Wisconsin Eau Claire, 37 points. Wisconsin Lacrosse, 44 points. And MIT, 60 and one half points. Congratulations to your 5K All Americans. We're going to step back from St. John Fisher University and we'll be back to wrap up this meet with the 4 by 400 meter relays. Welcome back to the Policini Track and Field Complex here in Rochester, New York. It's the 2023 Division III Outdoor Track and Field National Championships hosted by St. John Fisher University. We're back for the conclusion of day three. The last event set is on the track. It's gonna be the men's and women's 4x400 meter relays. Let me get you your lane assignments for this 4x400 and then we'll run through team implications of this last race. In lane one, it's Bethel. In lane two, it's SUNY Cortland. In lane three, John Carroll. In lane four, CMS. In lane five, it's Mount Union. In lane six, Wisconsin Lacrosse. In lane seven, Rowan. 
And in lane eight, it's Nebraska Wesleyan. That's the field. Stu, how is this going to shake out? Yeah, so right now, MIT with 60 and a half points has locked up the team title. Wisconsin lacrosse is, is in second with 44. Wisconsin O'Claire 37. John Carroll 35. And Rowan has 33. We'll have to watch John Carroll and Rowan. They're within striking distance of Wisconsin o Eau Claire. They both have relays, and they can move Wisconsin Eau Claire out of trophy contention with high finishes. Well, just with, with a third place, excuse me, with a sixth place finish for John Carroll, they'll move ahead of Wisconsin Eau Claire, and Rowan can move ahead of Wisconsin Eau Claire with four to five points, so anywhere from fourth or fifth place. I'm trying to do mental math while talking through it. It's extremely impressive. Everybody at home is extremely impressed, as am I, and I've been hanging out with you for like 30 hours up here this week. I can't wait to hang out with you more later tonight. The field, uh, the, excuse me, the stands are full. Everybody is ready for one last bout of action here at the 2023 Outdoor National Championship. Teams are all around the track, and it's going to get loud in here. If you're a fan of D3 track and field, <laughs> knock on some wood right now. We've seen too many protests in the 4x4, <laughs> so let's hope we have a clean race and we don't have a 90-minute delay like we had last year indoors. Yeah, we're looking for a clean race here in the 4x4. I think we'll get it. Stay I in your lanes, don't elbow anyone, and boom, we're, we're set. Eyes on the exchanges here. This first leg, they'll stay in lanes for the first lap. Leg two will cut in on the backstretch, and that'll be an exciting moment here in the 4x4. Four four. But for now, we'll quiet down, let them climb into their blocks, and we'll be back in a second to call the action. And the last of it, oh no, a second gun. A second gun. We'll keep an eye on the screen here as an official runs into the field. That's the first false start that we've seen in a sprint event of these championships. So we'll await an official decision here. You see the official in the red shirt on your screen there. She's selecting a card. It's a green card. Green card is good. That means no disqualification. We'll just charge it to the field. Round of applause <laughs> from the audience here. A sarcastic clap. Yeah, that's a sarcastic clap. Um, as you're just now joining us, a distance runner, Ethan Gregg, was disqualified for a false start in the 5K, and that got a round of boos from the crowd here at the Policini Complex. But, you know, some, some spirited applause here before the 4x4. Okay. There's a shot of the crowd. You can see we're absolutely packed into the rafters here, ready for some more great action. We'll quiet down. We'll give them another chance to get this started. And we're away clean. This time, the last event of these men's championships, the 4x400 four meter relay. Right in the middle of your track, CMS making up the stagger early. That's Christian Campbell. He's had a heck of a weekend in the 100 and the 200. But Wisconsin Lacrosse making up the stagger. Same with Jared Storm of Mount Union. And Christian Campbell of CMS is right there as well. It's going to be an interesting first handoff here as they come down the home stretch. Nebraska Wesleyan looking really good out here in lane eight. Mount Union and CMS kind of tied there for second. Rowan moving up into the first exchange. Hold your breath. Christian Campbell hands off first. They'll have a slight advantage due to being on the inside of Mount Union. They're going to come around this turn. You'll see the cones on your screen now and they'll break for lane one. We it's going to be CMS who hits it first with Mount Union in second. CMS has ran a great relay in the prelims, and they haven't let off, let, gave up the lead since the prelim, basically. 
But here comes Mountain Union. Mountain Union in second, Lacrosse in third, Rowan in fourth, Nebraska Wesleyan in fifth. Here comes Mount Union looking to take the lead into the exchange, but CMS has one more gear. CMS will enter this next exchange in first. A big leg by John Carroll of Garrett, from Garrett Clark to get them back in it. We mentioned they need some points to overtake Eau Claire as CMS and Mount Union battle it. But here comes Jameer Beasley out of Rowan. Jameer Beasley moving from fourth up onto the shoulder of third. He'll try to get in there before the turn, but he won't. Lacrosse will hold him off into the turn. CMS continues to lead. Mount Union can't quite get around. CMS will enter the stretch for the penultimate time with the lead. Let's see who gets to the exchange first. Mount Union cannot close. They cannot close. They cannot close. Does CMS have what it takes? Rowan now moving into third. Jameer Beasley with a great leg. CMS will hand off in first. Amari Conte of Rowan gets the baton, but so does Jamie Cockburn of Claremont Mud Scripps. But can Matt McBride hunt him down? CMS's lead has only grown, but you can never be comfortable with Matt, McRi Matt McBride in your rear view mirror. Caden Pierce of Wisconsin Lacrosse trying to make some moves. Amara Conte of Rowan trying to come up to Matt McBride's shoulder, but it's going to be CMS. Jamie Cockburn of CMS holding things off. Wait a but minute. Wait a second. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a, a minute. Second. Matt McBride of Mountain Union storming down the home stretch, overtaking CMS. It's going to be Mount Union. Matt McBride. Holy. 307-24. What a race for Matt McBride and the 4x4. The record is 307-42 all time. We have a new D3 record. A new D3 record. A new championship record. 307-24. Matt McBride, I'm looking for... Uh, I'm looking for a split on him, a 45-7 split for Matt McBride. 45-7 for Matt McBride. Wow, a new D3 record. What a run from Matt McBride. CMS looked to have it locked up with 200 to go. Mount Union takes it, CMS in second. Rowan rounds out the podium in third. Lacrosse fourth, Carroll fifth, Bethel sixth, Nebraska Wesleyan seventh, SUNY Cortland, a.k.a. Cortland State in eighth. Matt McBride putting his team on his back there. A great last hundred meters. Let's take a look at this. Look how much distance he made up. Not only does he make up this distance to win the national meet, but he does it in a D3 record. The relay team of Mount Union claiming 4 by 4 you. Wow. 45-7-8 for Matt, <clears throat> for Matt McBride's final 400. That looks to be the fastest split in the field, just doing it, doing a quick glance there. But you saw that gap he had at 200 to go, and he closed down on CMS so fast. Congratulations to that CMS squad. They held the lead just until the very end, but Mount Union takes it. So now for the team standpoint, we mentioned Rowan finishes third, so they'll get sixth points. So they will move up to 39 points, and John Carroll finished fifth, so they will get four points. They'll tie. So Rowan and John Carroll will tie with 39 points. They will tie for third. Wow. Wow, an absolutely electric men's 4x4 four four there. You still see the Mountain Union athletes celebrating on the infield. Just a shocking last 200 from Matt McBride, your champion. Oh, deep breath, folks, deep breath. One event left in these national championships. It's the women's turn at the 4x400 four meter relay. Let's get your lane assignments out to you. And then we'll run you through the team implications of this 4x4 four four on the women's side. Whoo! Wow. What a run for Matt McBride. All right. 
It's a women's turn. That was insane. All right, let's run through. Yeah, you introduce it, and I'll say the team stuff afterwards. Yep. We got eight lanes to fill here in the women's 4x400 meter relay. In lane one, you're going to see TC and J. In lane two, Bodwin. In lane three, you're going to see the crew from Wash U. In lane four, the crew from Mount Union saw what just happened. Now they want their shot at glory. In lane five, Loris. Lane six, MIT. In lane seven, we have Rochester. And in lane eight, the outside lane, it's a crew from Wisconsin Lacrosse. So, looking at the team stuff, I believe it is pretty set in stone. The only thing that we'll have to watch for is Loris versus Wash U. Loris is in second right now with 48 points. Wash U in third with 47. No one can really move in to the trophy contention. Mount Union can get the best Mount, excuse me, the best Mount Union can do is tie for fifth. And that's really about it right here from a team perspective. Bowden looks to add an All-American to their repertoire here, but they have some stiff competition so yeah, keep an eye out, Loris and Wash U. Wash U needs to jump Loris by two points to get the runner-up trophy. Loris has a really solid lineup here, as do all these teams, but Marion Edwards for Loris is gonna kick it off. Gabby Noland, who we saw anchor that four by one national championship team is slated to go off in second. Stevie Lamb in third, and Fadenhauer, the anchor for Loris. And we're underway in the women's 4x400 meter relay, the final event of these 2023 Outdoor National Championships. It's just been electric race after electric race, and the same thing seems to be happening here as Loris begins to make up the stagger. But on the outside, it's Rochester making up the stagger. Yeah, it's Marion Edwards for Loris right now in the strong leadoff leg. Madeline O'Connell for Rochester, looking very strong. Rochester won it indoors. Loris won it last year outdoors. But here comes Madison Miles of Mountain Union. They just saw their men's team get a victory. We'll see what they can do. But Madeline O'Connell of Rochester looking very strong in lane seven. Loris knows they need to be ahead of Wash U. And Wash U will have some work to do as we head into exchange number one. Rochester will hand it off in the lead out there in lane seven. Loris closing very quickly in lane five. It's gonna be Gabby Noland. Gabby Noland making up, making it up quick and will go straight to the lead as she has the inside advantage. We saw her anchor the four by 100 championship team earlier. So we know she's quick. She's won the 100 and 200 before with 200 to go. Gabby Noland and Loris lead it over Rochester. Loris reminding everyone why they are so good at the four by 400 meter relay. But watch for Wisconsin lacrosse, Emily Domodovich as she moves around the outside. Megan Bell of Rochester in second still as Gabby Nolan will hand the baton off to Stevie Lamb for her final lap in a Loris uniform. It's Loris, it's Rochester going one, two into the third lap. Kristen Hardy of Rochester gets the baton and has her eyes on Stevie Lamb. Morgan Jennings of lacrosse goes right around Mount Union's Kennedy Gibbons. And she's clear into lane one, but up front, Loris is in the lead, but it's being closed down quickly by Rochester. An intense battle for the reigning outdoor champs and the indoor champs, showing why these two programs are great 
in the 4x4. Four four. There's shoulder to shoulder. Loris comes out of the turn, still in the lead. Let's see if we can hold it to the exchange zone. That was a great challenge from Rochester. Loris holding on. One lap to go in the national championship. Loris Fadenhauer will get the baton in the lead. And here comes Rochester. It's Fadenhauer versus Bonsbach. Two strong 400 meter runners in their careers, both with experience in the anchor. Both were all Americans today. Fadenhauer was third, Bonsbach was seventh. But here comes the champ. Kennedy Waite is running them down. Bonsbach moving up now on Fadenhauer. She'd want to be a little bit closer with 200 to go. Fadenhauer has that inside but lane. But here comes Kennedy Waite, and she is moving. No one is going to slow down Kennedy Waite. Can she do what Matt McBride did? But it's Alyssa Fadenhauer for Loris. Susan Bonsbach, can Kennedy Waite catch them? I don't think she will. Alyssa Fadenhauer puts a statement on the field running Loris to another 4x4 four four national title. Bonsbach brings Rochester in for second, and Kennedy Waite brings Mount Union in for third. Congratulations to Loris with that 4x400 four, four four meter relay title. Wow. Back-to-back -back champs for Loris. And I believe that was a championship record, and it was another championship record here. And that concludes an excellent D3 cross track and field championship. Loris will hang on to the runner-up trophy as they stayed ahead of WashU. WashU finished seventh. Wow, ending on a championship record. And we will go back to the final turn here. As you see, Stevie Lamb holding off Kristen Bell of Rochester on this third leg. Kristen Bell was able to get a slight lead, but Stevie Lamb held her off as they got around that turn. And they're able to, Loris was able to hand off. And you can see, here's Kennedy Waite closing in on Bonsbach and Fadenauer. But Fadenauer is too experienced in the 4x4 as an anchor. And so she holds on for back-to-back -back championships. Speaking of championships, we'll go now to the podium to hand it over to Cassie Parker for another title. 5-5 five five from Wartburg, Lexi Brown. In seventh place with a time of 16.56.32 from the University of Chicago, Anna Koenig Zeisler. In sixth place with a time of 16.53.71 from WPI, Grace Hadley. In fifth place with a time of 16.46.60 from Emory, Annika Urban. In fourth place with a time of 16.43.64 from Carlton, Clara Mayfield. In third place with a time of 16.30.97 from Hope, Anastasia Tucker. In second place with a time of 16.22.31 from St. Benedict, Fiona Smith. And in first place with a time of 16.18.30 from Loris. Cassie Parker. And there you have it, Cassie Parker claiming her seventh national championship trophy as your All-Americans and the women's 5K come down off the podium. Well, folks, 
That's a wrap for Stu and I up in the booth at St. John Fisher University. The Policini Track and Field Complex had plays, has played host to what has been an amazing 2023 Division Three Outdoor Track and Field Championships. Stu, we saw a little bit of everything this weekend. Records in sprints, records in distance races, not just records. We saw amazingly competitive races. Yeah, everyone went after it. There was no tactics involved. It was straight heart right from the gun. Absolutely incredible. You see two of Loris's leaders there, Fadenauer and Cassie Parker, champions this weekend. And incredible performances all around. Countless D3 records, countless championship records. I'm sure there were tons of PRs, tons of hearts, heartaches, heartbreaks. You name it, we had it. And D3 track and field is on the rise. We hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this, you liked our commentary, check out our Instagram, our Twitter. We're bringing you up to the moment reactions with interviews, photos. We'll be back with podcast episodes, articles with all of these athletes and coaches after the championships. So make sure you follow us at D3GloryDays. Check us out on D3GloryDays.com, the number one site for your D3 running news. We're going to keep the cameras rolling here on the awards stadium. We still have some awards to hand out. Stu, before we go, can you quickly run through the, the podium finishers and the team competitions yep, for men and women? Everything looks pretty good. We don't see any protests, so I'm going to run through it right now for you. MIT, I don't know if it's scored yet. It's not scored yet. Okay. Once it's scored, we'll come through. So maybe once we see it's official and they get their scores, we'll jump back on here to give you the team scores. Yeah, we'll jump back to give you the team scores. We'll do that quickly. Thanks for staying with us. We've really enjoyed this. When the team scores are official, we'll come back to read those out to you. But, uh, yeah, we've really enjoyed this. Thanks for having us. The camera will continue rolling on the awards podium, so stay tuned if you want to see friends and family claim their trophies. We'll see when the standings are official, but until then, this has been the 2023 Division Three Outdoor Track and Field Championships.
could we have our men's team from MIT and our women's team from Wisconsin Lacrosse come on out to the infield, please? Meanwhile, we're getting a lot of young men up on the stand for another awards for you. Yes. Let's go down to the podium for the awards for the 4 by 400 meter relay. For the men, John. Presenting the awards is Tyler Neff, the long sprints coach from Mount Union. In eighth place with a time of 316.62, Cortland State. In seventh place with a time of 311.90, Nebraska Wesleyan. In sixth place with a time of 310.17, Bethel. In fifth place with a time of 309.44, John Carroll. In fourth place with a time of 308.81, Wisconsin Lacrosse. In third place with a time of 308.74, Rowan. In second place with a time of 307.82, Claremont Mudscripts. And in first place with a time of 307.24, Mount Union. If we could have the men's teams from MIT, Wisconsin Lacrosse, Wisconsin Eau Claire, and John Carroll to the infield, please. Once again, the men's teams from MIT, Wisconsin Lacrosse, Wisconsin Eau Claire, and John Carroll. If we could have the women's teams from Wisconsin Lacrosse, Loris, Washington University, and MIT to the infield. Wisconsin Lacrosse, Loris, Washington University, and MIT women's teams.
Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the podium. Our final awards for the women's 4x400 four meter relay. John? Presenting the awards is Matt Jones, head coach from Loris. In eighth place with a time of 358.11, Bowden. In seventh place with a time of 349.28, TCNJ. In sixth place with a time of 346.18, MIT. In fifth place with a time of 345.86, Washington University. In fourth place with a time of 345.0, Wisconsin Lacrosse. In third place with a time of 342.50, Mount Union. In second place with a time of 341.17, Rochester. And in first place with a time of 339.76, Loris. Once again, if we have the men's teams from MIT, Wisconsin Lacrosse, Rowan and John Carroll to the infield. The women's teams from Wisconsin Lacrosse, Loris, Washington University, and MIT to the infield. And we're back up here in the booth from the D3 National Championships outdoors. You see the 4x4 squad from Loris getting their national championship trophy joined by their fellow All-Americans at the Policy Track and Field Complex up on that podium. We're tuning in here to give you the full list of team scores. The team scores are now official on both the men's and women's side, and so we'll go ahead and run you through that podium. Yeah, on the men's side, MIT, after losing by a half a point, is now the outdoor team champions with 60 and a half points. Wisconsin Lacrosse finishes runner up with 49 points. Rowan finishes 39, excuse me. Rowan and John Carroll tied for third with 39 points to round out the men's podium. On the women's side, Wisconsin Lacrosse won indoors and now wins outdoors with 67 and a half points. Loris holds off Wash U to finish runner up with 58 points. Wash U finishes third with 51, and MIT will bring a second trophy back to Cambridge with 37 points. An incredible day of action here at the Policini Track and Field Complex in Rochester, New York, hosted by St. John Fisher. It's incredible what these D3 athletes have done over the weekend, setting countless records to be exact. I think there was seven. Countless records, to be exact, is a great way to describe Count, this I've, weekend, Stu. We've it's seen, been three full days of this. We've seen an amazing action out on the track today. And the field. And the field. It's the deepest that Division Three has ever been in history, and that was borne out in the results this weekend. We've had an incredible time covering these championships. We'll see you again outdoors next year, I'm sure, indoors as well, and maybe even a little cross-country action if you like the sound of our voices. I'm Noah. This is Stu. It's been our pleasure to hang out with you guys in the booth. We will keep the camera rolling here for the team award presentations, but you won't hear from us again until later. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining us for the 2023 Division Three Outdoor Track and Field Championships.
Here they are now. Let's hear it for our teams from Rowan and John Carroll.
Now we'd like to invite our national runner-up to the podium, the team from Wisconsin Lacrosse. Wisconsin Lacrosse with 49 points. Let's hear it once again, fans, for our national runner-up for the men's side, Wisconsin Lacrosse. Fans with 60 and a half points, we wish to invite to the podium the 2023 Outdoor National Champions from MIT. Once again, fans, let's hear it for our national champions for 2023 MIT. Now let's turn to the women's side of our scores. Our fourth place team in the women with 37 points, the women's team from MIT.
A round of applause for our fourth place team, MIT. And now we'd like to uh, invite to the podium our third place women's team with 51 points from Washington University. Let's hear it, fans, for Wash U. And now, coming to the podium with 58 points, the national runner-ups from Loras. Let's hear it, fans, for Loras, our national runner-ups.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, with 67 and a half points, after winning the indoor championship this winter, they return to the podium as the champions outdoors, the team from Wisconsin Lacrosse. Our national champions outdoors for 2023.